Everybody alive? Yes, well, I appreciate Mr. Hood's a little chilly in here, but they're getting the heat turned up. I don't know what they were trying to make, ice cubes or what in here or not, but appreciate Mr. Hood allowing to be alive. Ain't nothing changed, still got to be saved, still got to live right. We're still in it, ain't that right? right. Mr. Hood's still in control of everything. Ain't getting no better, elections are almost over with, and still like we still stuck with the same dumb people. Ain't nothing changed, can't expect no change. The only thing we do is look to Mr. Yahuwah. This is the world we live in, folks. That's just bottom line. This is where we at. This is what we live in. This is what we got to suffer. It's time to turn to Yahuwah. It's the same characters every time. You know, it's kind of like years ago, they had wrestling. Sometimes somebody want to be different. They'll come out with a mask on. It's that, that's, that's so with a man. Everybody there act like they don't know who it is. Everybody, be, is that a feather? So, they, you know, somebody come out. You know, of course it be to try to, you know, amuse the fan, have somebody wear a mask. You're like, that's just, so, so with a mask on. That's all it is. Every year we get this, you know, every voting time is the same politician. You know, I've been a proponent for, we need to pick our own candidates. That's part of the rationality behind why we need to establish a separate state. You know, establish ourselves as a nation where we can, um, you know, make laws that fit in. I don't have a problem with a lot of laws they have in America. I, I, don't, I don't think I have a problem with any of them, actually. Um, it's just the fact, the practicality of the fact that they're not fair with us when it comes out to issuing the laws or the judgment. That's not a problem I got with other than that. What's wrong with killing, stealing, raping? I mean, what you got a problem with? Speeding, I see people ride down the with like a damn fool all the time. I mean, I, you could do 10. They give you 10 anyway. I'm riding, I was doing 80. Man, that's a car came past us last night. Them jokers had been done 100 plus. I mean, they were right on there, and they just zooming. It's late at night, but I'm like, cause I'm like, so how do you know what everybody else is doing on the expressway this time? You finna make a judgment move right quick. You, somebody just looked, it was clear. You're doing 100 miles an hour, so you covering ground. No, nope, you wasn't there just a second or two, just a couple of seconds. All of a sudden, you're on somebody, and you changing lanes. Not one lane, you running across three lanes. I just say, you know, people don't think. I was young, we used to do dumb stuff too, but I tell you, these people are a lot dumber than we were. They're not that clever. And people just not considering people liars. I'm, I'm against that, you know. I don't know. Me, really, they need to make a separate lane away from everybody that's two lanes away. And in that lane, let you go as fast as you want to go. You kill yourself, leave you right down. I just been there, no need to check on it. Leave, that's something you should have worked that out. Ambulance will get to you. There's no need to stop it, nobody. They'll just put you on a separate spreadway, let you drive fast as you want. Y'all kill yourself. Just leave you laying on the side of the road till everybody get a chance, get where they're going. And, you know, one day we ain't too busy, you know, try to see, you know, maybe check on, you know. If it ain't too much, you know what I'm saying, depend on the weather and how things going, you know what I'm saying. If, you know, if somebody hit the lottery and won at 1.900 million, yeah. then, you know, we'll. Yeah. Oh, y'all yeah, heard that story. Preacher said. Preacher said, y'all had a conversation with Preacher. Preacher told y'all to go play the number. Preacher told y'all to go do that. I, ain't spend, I told him to do that. I don't know. I just asked you. I know. Yeah, I, I talked to one. Yes, sir. Guilty party. I said before. You look like you were like you went to tell I said it before. No, no. How many of y'all remember me tell y'all to play the lottery? Let me, let me tell y'all my stance on it. <clears throat> when I was on the Christian antics, they taught us, you know, the lottery was wrong. And uh, I, I'm not a gambler. I'm a sore loser. I'm going to get my money back one way or another. That's just being honest. I'm just a sore loser, so I just don't stay with it. Don't, don't do it. If you can't afford to lose it, just don't do it. That's the game I've done, you know. I lost bit money doing business, now you lose money the same way. Well, for a lot of people, it's a business somewhat transaction for them. So that's the, that's the life of choice you make. Just understand, I ain't paying your damn bills now. You lose your money, your ass lose what you got. That way you're going, that's part of business. You got you to gotta eat that loss. But y'all don't put it on me. Those are your choices. You want to play the lottery. You want to do stocks. You want to do bonds. They're all somewhat of an investment type style. I just tell people, you need to know what you're doing. That's just being honest. Just need to know what you're doing. I, you know, people can try to put in the same... Um, category of stocks, but with stocks, you can kind of look at overall averages and numbers,
projections, and they can say they do the same thing on numbers. You keep playing the same number, you're going to come back around. It's slightly somewhat different. You know what I'm saying? Because with that, you can look at a company's portfolio. They can show you what they typically done in different quarters. You can see what they've done over the past couple of years, how they rank. So you got a lot of different things you can kind of put into play in your decision making on whether you're going to invest money into a company. When you're playing a number, you just probably come I just feel like, you know, my arm itching. I'm not putting no hundred dollars on my arm. It's you need to go get your two dollar bar of soap and wash your arm. Let's just be proud for me. I don't play it. I'm not interested in playing the lottery, but I'm a nigga. If you hit, I'm gonna want something. It's just best to be up front with everybody up front. I'm a nigga. I ain't used to be. I'm gonna want something. That's just the nigga in me now. I don't wanna know where you got it from. And when you go f up the money you won, I still got what you gave me. Please don't come back. You know I got you. Listen, chance of you doing it twice, I just rather not risk it. But I, I mean, that's just me. I, I mean, I just ain't no gambler. I don't, I don't have that kind of interest in, you know, it don't bother me what they put the number up to. It don't bother me about no ticket. I'm just not, you know, they ain't my tea. They ain't my thing. I respect, you know, other people got their thing. Other people, if people that do it, I know some people, my mama, she used to hit that little thing. She get $2,500. Thing that nigga told me about it? No. You know what I found out about it? One other relative, she don't spend it. That's what kind of does it, cause she got that nigga in her. And when you got that itty bitty nigga in you, that itty bitty nigga make you hide your money. Yeah, she ain't here. What's the most you hit for 2,500 before? Okay, doing it now. I ain't know nothing about it. I thought you hit 2,500 before. 1,500, 12? That's tight. Them numbers. Okay, them different numbers I remember hearing about, just to see. Yeah, uh -huh, I remember the number behind that. I just don't remember seeing no profit. I ain't seen no profit or nothing like that. But I mean, that's, that's me. Y'all want to do that? Now, of course, y'all just heard what you want to hear. You heard that saying? Peter said it's like, no, listen, that's your future. That's your life. That's how you want to spend your money. That's how you roll. I, I just don't roll like that. I'm telling you, I'm telling the damn stuff. And I ain't got no money to be losing in him. All I got that paper set here on a coffee can full. Of, I, I ain't without. I, I got enough great stuff in my eyebrow now. I don't. I just. I just. I'm been. I think people look ridiculous. You see her writing that little squiggly pen. Get you a grown. Get you a, at least a child pencil. Get an ink pen for writing, scratching, reading, lottery bibles, and all this stuff. Why they got to put it? They sell them. It be about these book, dream book. What my dream mean? Your dream mean cares back to sleep. Get him get a job. This ain't a number. The number, come 8 o'clock, ass out of here dressed at the job where you get a paycheck at. But, you know, everybody in different places. So I had to clear this up. I don't know, y'all, I don't know how it come, you know. Preacher said, play, preacher, I don't even gamble. Why would I tell you? I don't gamble. I just, I'm gambling every day now. I'm a black man in America. Hell, I can't get no risk in this. That means that everybody different. I just, I just ain't got no money to throw away. I ain't got nothing to lose. I'm already, I'm, I'm on the collect. You know what I'm saying? I'm on the collect. I'm like a pay phone. You don't put nothing in, you ain't getting nothing out. That's just, man, you can hang the damn thing up because I ain't got nothing for you. But, man, please, I can't give up no money, man. I can't, I can't roll no dice and let it go. I can't flip no card and I lost everything. I just can't. Whoo, I seen people do that. I had family. My dad always shoot pool, so he used to gamble. He was good. He want to lose him. His brother done made my head one. That joker wins. I mean, he hit this in the 70s. He had hit eight, nine grand on skin game. And come with a car. He come home, I'm telling you, he come with a Mark 5. Shit, man, you talking that day he walking. He ain't got dying that name. That from that night, that day you seen, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, he eight, nine grand, strong, Mark 5. I'm talking about car, beautiful. Listen, the next day, he ain't got a dime. He ain't got a, he walking. He go home, he go to sleep. Monday morning, he go to work. Every Monday morning, he going to work. I don't care what he hit. Friday, when he get out, he get a check. He not coming home. When he come home, he done hit. He'll come in. He don't mind giving you a little money here like that. He'll get the liquor. He'll pay for some food. He going back out that night. He going to lose everything. Come Sunday, he walking. He coming straight home. When he coming to the house, he talking about he going straight to bed. Monday morning, he going. He never gambled at his house. He told that, he said, he said, listen, he don't care about no nothing. He said, he said, I don't get out of my house, I got to have somebody lay my head down. 
Now, the word was from my dad that one time, he lost their family in a skin game. Said so the guy was there to collect them. That was the word what we were growing on. There's a man that said, man, come down the door, he lost y'all in a skin game. They said the man gambled his whole family. He said, he, but at house, he said, he'll tell you, he no. He said, never put the house up. He said, gotta have somebody live here. And Monday morning, he going to work. But come payday Friday, you won't see on that weekend. Not that he completely, he, and he come see you, you finna lose something at your house. Y'all laughing. He'll sell you something and steal it back. Listen, man, he came around one time, saw my dad number. Oh, he, he need, back then, he need with $2 to get it. He getting that with $2. Listen, he coming out stacked. He'll come in, he's selling flatlight, $2. Daddy got the flatlight, paid him for the flatlight, had to send him down. <laughs> Some more relatives came around, they said, I got that same flatlight. <laughs> they said, oh, this sold it to me. Listen, he sold it to him, stole it from every one of them. Went back and sold it all, all about the same flatlight. Came around and sold my dad a lawnmower. My dad went straight, put a lock on the bottom of the house. He said, I know that nigga. That ain't gonna steal that lawnmower back. My dad see that lawnmower, he's like, get that lawn. Six dollar. Brand spanking new. He got, he went straight down the bottle lock. He come to get it. He got some other family member out. They were sitting there, they were gambling, he was broke. So he told me, he said, man, I need something to drink. Give me some money, go get something to drink for y'all. They gave him the money, they waited around for him. They're like, damn, Oda been gone a long time. So I hope he ain't around with that money. They went over that door to walk out there. He stuck all the bottles on the step. So they came and hit that, went straight down the step, off the bottom. He was just like that, he gonna hit you up. So I seen so many people do so much stuff gambling. I guess that's why I always had a bad taste for it. I said, man, make a steal from your own folk, can't lose your check. Well, I'm telling you, man, listen, it's, it's a serious, you got people now who can do it. I got uncles that done it. They were good. They mean, what they lose, they lost. It was never gonna be nothing serious. They could just handle that, you know what I'm saying? But watching him do what he did, it just put a bad taste in my mouth. You know what I'm saying? You do all your money. You don't win eight thousand on the car. Leave it alone. I mean, you're good. Stand back. Know when your end run out. That's enough. And then he go to game. I mean, he wound up eventually dying. The guys wound up uh, Tennessee. Went to see him. Um, they ran him out the side of the mound. Off the side of the mound. Ran him off. Flipped that car. He went. I mean, off the side of the mound. Y'all know how serious that is. So I don't fool with it. I just, bad taste for me. That's everybody. I, rush it. I, do my, I do my, I just do business. I get a product, I sell a product. And the end of the day, I get my money, I keep moving. I just don't like it. Because you, I'm telling you, it's some people don't like losing. I'm telling you, it's some people, let me tell you something. You playing with gambling, man, you know how many guys, why I done told them, next time you gamble, I'm gone. So them niggas will still go, and it be the last hand, they'll lost everything. And get what they realize. She leave him. I can't let you leave him. And that done went from a game to I gotta kill you. And people try to wonder what's going on because they got that habit. That itch will make you go. I'm telling you, am I lying? If, if listen, I and the I watch folks play, listen, it's real serious. When you playing, you got when you playing with stuff like that, you gotta be a person where you understand how it works. You know what I'm saying? That's a lose game and it flip like that, it go. You know what I'm saying? If it's a one, it gotta be losers. Can't be one, it gotta be loose. Only way you get a winner gotta be loser. There's no way to pay y'all, you know, one billion dollars unless it's, hell, it gotta be a million folk done lost. And everybody ain't a loser. Not like that. So I start looking at some stuff. I'd rather, I'd rather sell somebody something that's a win-win. I sold you something you want, I got what I wanted. Me and you walk away from here, me and a square deal. That's just, that's just how I read it. I don't wanna flip no card and you feel like you got sour and I'm gonna have to put one in your head or you gonna have to put one in my back. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a lose-lose. You thinking, well, he walking off with my stuff. It ain't your stuff, you just gambling it. But some people, they process it different it's over. Now when they're playing, they're looking at winning. But when they lose, they're looking at, man, you just took my stuff. And you got people process like that, they'll hurt you. So y'all understand where I'm at with that? I ain't the gambling person. I just don't do it because I don't like to lose. I want them people, I feel like that, you took my stuff. Now, should I be gambling? No, I'm a bad gambler. That's why I don't do it. It ain't no good. Now, I had some friends now, Mr. Gambler. Y'all can't tell folk, but they always won. They never lost. It's impossible for them to lose. You set the table up. So you, you front the money. 
And then you let everybody gamble. Then you rob all of them. You can't lose. I'm telling you, I know how to do it. All, all of it. I ain't always been no preacher. Never lost. It's impossible. It's impossible. That's why I don't play the game. I don't, I don't watch it from too many angles. Did too much, seen too much, been involved with too much. You just realize it's a dirty business. Gambling is a dirty business. They try to put it and make it look better. You go in the store and pay the A-Rab. A-Rab take all your money. A-Rab get paid either way. They get paid for holding the ticket. They get paid for setting the ticket. They get paid from winners and losers. That's the bad business to get into. Damn gambling. Go get you a store and put them damn tickets up there. You getting paid off of Aaron when he clowns all day long. These clowns come here, throw them in the trap. Sitting here, these itty bitty pencil, throw it in the trap. They're wasting time. A Ralph, steady getting paid. Hell, they don't need to say out now. That's why you can say that outdated stuff. Hit money from the lottery. See, I just taught my Ben, and they ain't even know nothing about it. See, the loser, the player, you know who don't lose? The people that's selling it. Tell me, let me ask you a question. When they pay you $1 billion, that should put them in the hole, shouldn't it? They should be in the hole. If I paid you $1 billion, I should be in the hole. Unless, if I paid you $1 billion, how much did I make? How much did I make if I'm going to pay you $1 billion? See, they keep taking the stakes up because you pull more people out. See, the bigger the state, the more people who don't get them come out and start putting more money behind it. Y'all got to start thinking as a nation how you want to do stuff. I ain't trying to knock your hustle. Your hustle where it is. You know, I ain't mean, I ain't trying to knock. Now, you want to rape and kill folks and women, then your hustle should have been cut out with you. But if a person, that's your hustle, that's what you want to do, I just think from a different end. I ain't got no money to get these clowns. You know what I'm saying? They don't never lose. Everybody lose the other people in the, in the line. How many winners can it be? One big one, then you got the trinket one that they're going to still pay. They can give you one point, whatever, nine million, nine hundred million. Then they pay some other people with some close numbers. But nobody look at how much money they made. Yeah. Nobody never count their money, do they? Nope. Then they, part of it going to go to school, part going to go there. And how much going to go in their pocket? Y'all know how many people going to pay their money and spend their money? Spend it for the so-called Negro people. I look at it for us. When you look at just how bad this system is for us and how much damage this system is doing to us, can we really afford to just give these people money? You getting took anyway. See, almost any other race can afford to do it. It's pleasure. You know the only people can't afford to lose nothing. Oh, man, come on. We drop a dollar, nigga, pick it up. We ready to kill them. It's the principle. You throw away this. I just can't afford to lose. You playing a losing game. Gambling for suckers. It really is for suckers because everybody can't win. Everybody skin table can't win. They just that way their skin. Somebody got to lose. These people that take got to lose. One person can walk around. Some other people might walk around and ain't lose that much, but somebody going to come out and win it. It got to be a big loser at their table. Why y'all always got to let it be you? You already losing. You're losing economically, education, health, wide, everywhere. We can't afford to throw away our money. This kind of hurts y'all feel a little bit. No. I just need to talk y'all, just tell y'all reality when you do stuff. So oh, is, is, is you doing that any detrimental or damaging to anything or no? But at the same time, you just got to start being wise about your decision making. And me, as a leader, I wouldn't do well if I just didn't give you all your pros and your cons when you're doing something. You know what I'm saying? Don't make it like, oh, please don't want that's, that's not the truth. But you can't afford to lose. You know what I'm saying? We lose all the time. Why would we take the same money we put in these people program and put their money in a, in a vested interest for all of us where we can secure ourselves a profit? Let's put something together. Let's get us a store. Let's sell these damn sucker these tickets. Go put them in Gwinnett. Go put them in Cobb County. Go put them in Buckhead. Hell, they gamble too. They put them in our neighborhoods and they rip us off. They give you cheap beer, keep you high, cigar cigarellos, what them things are. They're going to give you everything so you're not really conscious when you're smoking. You're not that brain. You keep thinking for a dollar, hell, it makes sense for you to pay one dollar and give you a billion. It just makes sense mathematically. How many of y'all got a dollar? One dollar. Put your hand back down. I need everyone here who has one dollar to raise your hand. It's practical. I'm going to give every one of y'all a billion dollars. 
Don't make sense. It may say that somebody's going to spend a dollar and get a billion dollars. It may say they're going to take from people like you. They're going to take from us because we're the less fortunate. We're the people that don't think. See, poor people always looking for something to happen that's just unimaginable. I found a penny on head. I'm going to get $2 million for a penny. They make you have these wishful thoughts that make absolutely no sense. It's not practical. A lot of stuff that we think of, it's just not practical. You want a billion dollars? Go do the performance or something to get you a billion dollars. I'll just tell you, other people got a billion dollars. How many of them got it for a dollar? That's how many got it for a hundred dollars. No, no, there's nobody. It's never happened. See, they always get poor people to hope into something that's not practical. That's how you take their money. You all, they always take from us. That's why we, that's why we stay same economically impoverished people because we keep wishful thinking. You know how you're going to make your money? Hard work and dedication. Yep. Right. I work seven days a week. Y'all understand that? Okay. It's round mouth. Seven days, I push to do what I do. It's not practical that you can just do one thing and all that's just going to happen. It just don't happen. But y'all always thinking you're just going to do this one thing that's going to be it. Man, you, gotta, you constantly got to stand behind it. Constantly. It's just, being, it's just being practical. You know who you want to see in the line? Warren Buffett, Bill Gates. Them people don't play no, no garbage like that. People don't waste their time. They know, that's for poor people. You know where you ain't going to find them at? In church on Sunday? It's not practical. They know it's not practical. A lot of stuff they give you is for poor people. The conversation I give y'all, the reason why these preachers don't talk to these people like that, because they know the people be looking at them. They get paid for selling people dreams. Think about it. Raise your hand right now. Just raise your hand. I want y'all to do it. Take it. Don't, don't fast like this if you want to be saved. Just pray me, Lord, I'm your child. Forgive me for everything I've done. Your son, Jesus, Jesus, died for my sin. And right now, I'm saved. Give the Lord a hand clap. Sit down. How's that? Sit down. People, that may, that may sound good. How much y'all had to do? How much effort? How much sweat until? you? How many prayer meetings you had to go to? People pay for that. Effortless. You just obtained eternal life right now. Right now. People pay for this gun. You know what it take to be saved? <laughs> That's the easy. What, how, much, how, much that, how many of y'all that put y'all out? How many of y'all, your tongue's so tired now you can't talk? You've been on your knee hollering, gee, 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 gee. How many of y'all, you just stressed? It done burnt you out. You don't, how many of y'all, you don't know how to do it? It's too easy. People pay for that. You just obtained eternal life. You don't have to do nothing else right now. You are saved, waiting to go to glory. Right now. That's what people pay for. That's how Henning, that's how Jake, that's how all unpack the people out. It's effortless. It's effortless. They beat people. That's why people won't fight me. You got to sit here too long. You got to keep doing, you got to learn and learn. You got to do this and do this. Let me see. The man that came out and gave our salvation came out here for what, five minutes? What did he came out and do? One act and left? Man was running for his life practically all the time. Man ridiculed. Man was spit on a strip naked. This is the man that gave it out. <laughs> and here you go do nothing? Just makes so much sense. I just got re-saved again. <laughs> y'all behind me now. I'm ahead of y'all. See, now, if, now what y'all can do, y'all can come back tomorrow night for $100, and I can help you catch up for your next series. People like they can do that. They can borrow 100 get People don't want to put in real time for something. That's, like people don't lie. They don't want to put in the time. Get your ass out that line and go to work. <laughs> Isn't that right? Start putting your mind up. Start looking at how you're spending your money so you can start saving money. Look at what do you do? What do you do to me? Listen, you got to teach money. You got to use money and make it. If you can't make it boomerang, don't fool with it. It got to come back around. If you throw it and it just stay out there, you're done. It got to come back. You ain't got to listen to me. I just be running my mouth. Try the lottery. You lose too long before you can ever get some. Most people, when they get some, the little win they get, it's a trick to keep you coming back. You go ahead and you hit $1,200. You ain't stopping. You're going back. They're free money. 
You know why they give you $1,200? Because $1,200 will get $5,000 out your pocket. You know, chasing. You know what I'm going to say? All I got to do is just get that 1200 again, and you can start doing your number. You out of $15,000 trying to chase 12. That, that's the name of the game, though. That's, I, listen, that's their hustle. I just have to talk with y'all. That's they, listen, when I see people in the line, I don't pay these people no attention. Y'all want to know my honest opinion about people playing lottery? I don't feel like you're intelligent. I just don't feel like y'all intelligent. Anybody. So I, don't want, I wasn't going to tell y'all that because I leave it alone. That's not, let me say that, no, I know they love, please just hurt our feelings. Let me tell you, I don't think a lot of things are intelligent moves. I just don't think you're that intelligent. It could be my mom and your mom, whoever. I just don't, so I let y'all keep going. I just don't think you're very intelligent. I think you're a time waster. It's too many other things you could do with your time, your money, instead of wasting giving to somebody playing a game. You the fool paying the one billion dollars. They ain't getting it from me. When the person here and they get it, you ain't got a dime of my money, boo. There's some other people poor hustling who throw that money away who could have got themselves together, consolidated them, consolidate themselves, and put something together where they wouldn't have gotten a million dollars, but they could have built something that could have been practical, that could have generated some money or funds or create something for themselves. But our people don't think like that. They're too damn busy thinking the white man going to give them something. I just, man, I, I just don't think it's intelligent. I'll never do it. You won't see me in the line. I don't do it. I had a guy, I told him something to do. They were buying a ticket. And when he was rich, I told him, I said, what you doing not practical? I said, if I did, I told him what I would do. I told him, I said, it's not even practical. He went, did what I did. He came back. He got in my bed. He said, you call. I said, I said, I said, you guys are really not that bright. I said, listen, why would you keep playing with this stuff? I said, listen, man, if it's me, I said, hell, I'll buy the whole roll. Waste time. I said, hell, you don't bought enough for it. You quit. I said, now the next person come by, they get the number. I wouldn't invest. It don't make sense. I bought enough damn ticket that one of these tickets just about got a hit. I said, quit playing with the poor ticket. The ticket that's going to get you your money going to get you the quicker. You got to spend for the $50 ticket. See, this is what y'all don't realize. Y'all, I told you because they're thinking now. they ass asking that somebody will give them a life. Let me tell you something. How many $50 tickets you think I'm going to sell down here? How many you think these $50 tickets are going to roll out of here before somebody won't buy them? People are going to spend $50 looking for a number to come up quicker. People spend a dollar. You know what they say? A dollar ain't nothing. That's how I need you to think. I'm going to rip their ass because they ain't got no brain. How many folks, what's a dollar? I, line y'all ass up, dollar. That's how I got 1.900 million. Because they dumb ass keep saying, what's a dollar? I show you what a dollar is. Look at how high the number is. See, it's a Ponzi scheme, it, but they just not bright enough to think. How many of y'all thinking now since I told you that? Why would I be playing with this? I said, why would you be wasting time? I said, let's do your numbers. I said, do your average. At a dollar ticket, how many tickets you think I'm going to let stretch out before I let one hit? What, probably every five tickets? Two percent. What you figure how long you're going to hit when you pull these tickets? Every how many? How many tickets y'all think you're going to buy for one of these tickets hit? At a dollar. How many? About a thousand? He about damn skip. He probably hit you by your five hundred better. That, I'm only getting five hundred dollars. How much can I let a winning ticket be? Don't y'all think? Do y'all understand? Common sense. Let's let do common sense. These my damn tickets. I'm drawing these tickets up. You think I got these tickets down straight? Every three tickets a hit. These my tickets. I'm printing the damn tickets. Don't y'all think I know how long these? I know what store has the ticket. I know it's nowhere in the hell. You, 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 you all got no same ticket. I ain't even put them there. How would I know? How do I know what store? Because I mark them. I roll them. I know how they stretch out. It don't make practical. Pre okay, every 500 ticket, I'm getting away $1,000. Let's see. How much does 500 ticket cost? $500. Every 500 ticket, I get away $2,000. Why that don't make sense to y'all all of a sudden now? Cause ain't, see, I don't even do it and I got more sense than forgot. It ain't even practical. It's not practical. It's not practical. If I'm gonna put money, I'm gonna put money on a $50 stack. Somebody pick, listen, how many people can pay $40 for a ticket? I need these tickets to sell because I'm printing them. Which means I had to have a better average on these tickets because of the cost of the tickets. 
It's a, still ain't that much. But they hitting quicker than your broke ass. <laughs> I'm just helping y'all out. I just helped the man got his money back. It didn't take long. I, just, I, 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 say, I told him. I said, y'all not thinkers. Y'all waste time. I'm a hustler. I come from the street. It don't make, it don't make common sense. Buy a hundred tickets, and I just let you, and you just won $10,000. That makes sense to you? I sold 500 tickets for a dollar and gave you $10,000. Which means I got to make that money back up somewhere else in another store. And this ain't happening regularly, is it? But I need that person who hit that $10,000 ticket to do what? Get on that phone and run that damn mouth. You ain't going to believe it. Damn skipper I don't believe it. I just got $10,000 for a dollar. Call. You know how many dumb ass folks finna run in here and guess what they looking for? Who know what they looking for? Guess. Y'all gotta get it's gonna take a while. What are they looking for? Ten thousand dollars. How much they looking to spend? That's how I get my money back. All the ass in this store. And they don't realize I gotta move stuff around, but I make you flock to a store. Y'all start running and getting. Listen, these little country poor hillbilly white folk, they ass one ain't setting up old outdated peanuts. Outdated drink. Look where they put a ticket. They'll stick them in a white rural county. And guess what happened? Four air drive all the way from Tennessee to come some hillbilly store down there because somebody bought a ticket for a million dollars. Is it practical that I got this damn store locked up in here with million dollar tickets? But I just helped some poor, old, decrepit crackers sell every damn thing in the store. Because they can't think. Why you think I put two of them in there? Then, everything they use is bait. Just bait. They'll put up with uh, Denzel Washington um, explain why he uses crack cocaine. They're like, Denzel Washington? Cut bait. Made you look, didn't it? And you, can, you listen to the whole interview. Man, never said nothing about using no crack. But look at them views. I got you that, didn't it? Because somebody set it up, cut back. That's how you draw people in, cut back. Click, same thing. Cut, cut, because nigga ain't got nothing left. Cut. That's the end of it. It's cut bait. We used to cut our bait up. I'm going to tell you the fish. With like uh, squids or anything like that. Did you use fish before? Did y'all use to cut it up or click it up? Don't worry about it. I can't hear Next video, Uncle Ted. Yeah, listen. I can help y'all allow y'all to take your time. Stop believing these people. These folks, listen. Nobody for you. Let me, let me tell you the truth. Nobody for y'all. Don't believe these people. Don't, don't believe these politics. They not for y'all. I had to do business. Just know, I had to do business. Y'all understand? I'm a business man, okay? These people don't give a damn about y'all, okay? A lot of folks don't give a damn about you. Nobody cares nothing about you. You got to care about yourself. When you start caring by yourself, you start sitting down looking at things from a simplistic point. A lot of things just don't make practical sense. Y'all got it? And you look at people, yeah, if people hit, people go. And you know, the, how many of them people wind up keeping it? You have most story of people who lost everything they got. But when people go and work and bust their ass and get it, they don't have that story. Everything they get, they give it to you to wreck your life. Because they know everything. You look for things, and, they, and you know what they do and why you, how you spend it. I can do it again. And that's how you lose everything. They'll set you up just to crash your life. See, we messed up so much. Like, I'm telling you something. Gambling has always been him, but it was a rule of thumb for our people. Gamblers were looked down on years ago in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Unless you were hustling, they were back atlas. Always gambling was such. So gambling wasn't something out public like that, really. Because people kind of looked down and they looked at how many homes were broken up and marriage were broken up. Kids didn't have shoes. Food wasn't put on the table. So gambling had always been something that was kind of shun in a way with us. You got what I'm saying? But it people start looking at integrity. They looked at you. A woman came along years ago in the 40s and 30s and 20s and 50s, 60s. She tells you, man, a guy, he, 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 gambler. They get you a man, hard work. They tell him, that man, a gambler make you lose everything. They would look down on it. They could tell him they look down on gambling. They just look down and like, I want to put my trust in a person that did gambling. That's just kind of the, that was kind of the look that it gave because they looked at how many people disenfranchised. A lot of kids went to bed hungry. A lot of kids didn't get clothes. A lot of bills weren't paid. A lot of kids grew up in the dark because of gamblers. 
piss poor gambling because people look for people to give them something for free. It's not practical. It's not practical. So you had to start looking at when your oppressor had incarcerated, listen, people went to prison and died behind gambling. Died. Now the white man comes along and say, hell illegal. Come to my store establishment I do business with and you can buy it legally. See, alcohol. Do you understand people die in prison for selling alcohol booze? Huh, not to mention. Sunday bootlegger. Y'all know how many folk went to jail? I came along with Sunday bootlegger was hot. You go, listen, they come and bust it like a drug house. Now here, you can buy beer on Sundays. Do y'all know how many people went to prison behind bootlegging, behind gambling? Now the cracker said free. Now it's legal. You can go and you can do it. So I'm a person that sit back and I watch this man and say, damn, that's amazing. You let people, you waited till you rotted us out. And now we right back where we were. Right in their face. He look, I still rip these niggas. I ripped them when it was illegal. I ripped these niggas when they're illegal. So at some point, we have to educate ourselves and come up with a better scheme to stop being on this man detriment. This man is a hurt to us. This man is not a help to us. He's hurt us. I had cousin them, listen, lights. They had no food. You understand? I taught They had no food because of my uncle gambling. That's funny stories we tell it. You know who will never laugh about it? Them damn kids don't laugh about it. Can you imagine when you get home, you ain't got nothing to eat because your daddy gambling. Gambling. Nobody talk about them kids, though. Nobody talk. I ain't just talking about them, I'm talking about just people in general. Home. Can you imagine that? Y'all had a car. Y'all don't have a car. He come home, walk. he'll leave in her car, go to the store. I need to run up to the store. He come back walking. Tell her the car broke down. He going to get it towed and get it fixed. He done pun the car and lost it. They thinking the car broke down. He going to get it fixed. He lost it. So, you know, there's some people look at gambling a little different than we do. When you're the victim of it. Y'all got what I'm saying? See, a lot of y'all, you have never been a victim of these bad decisions. And again, even with it going on. See, the white man had been involved with it when it was legal and illegal. See, he probably is on every, with alcohol, he made money doing prohibition. He made, bro, he made money when he got rid of prohibition. He never loses. You know who loses every time? Us. The drunk man that comes home and beats his wife and his kids. The drunk man who can't get up and go to work because he's so hungover. The kid who never gets his father, his mother's a drunk. And she had to be raised by another family member because of the alcohol. And as soon as his aunt put a government stamp on it, we go to the store, we get it. And thank the Lord, it's legal. What changed? That's the same looker that disenfranchised how many black kids? White kids, Hispanic kids. This thing tore up families. Before crack came along, y'all people grew up in the crack area. I remember when alcohol was crack. I remember before wake up to drink. They drunk they such and wake up to drink. When they woke up, they want sober butter a little bit. When they woke up, their first meal was beer, alcohol, liquor. I couldn't clear up. Just burnt. They were drunk so long, it hell, they drunk looked like it was sober, because that's the only way you knew them. You didn't know them no other way besides. I'm telling you, am I lying? Info, that's the only way you knew them drunk. And they functioned drunk all day. All day drunk. So I, I kind of look at some things, I look at some things a little differently. So I say that to say to you guys, you know, we have to start being a little more conscious of things that he says it's okay to do it. You know, and I, and I want you to not only look at, not how I look at you, your oppressor look at you. You cried out to that man years ago, people that look like you, about gambling. And what gambling was doing to your people. Now you in the line. You just look bad. Now he sit around and he beat you another way. 
and you feel better about yourself because you ain't going behind some back door or some man coming and picking up your money asking you, are you trying to box it or are you doing it straight? You know what I'm saying? You go in there and you let him do it. You see what I'm saying? So I want y'all to just be conscious. Feel, whatever you do, you feel good about it for yourself. That's a lot of stuff I look at differently. I don't try to, you know, give my opinion on everything I say or what I see, but I just want y'all to know how I look at it. I just don't, I don't look at gamblers as intelligent people. I just don't do it. Hell, I got something I can do with my money. Hell, I just roll my one up, bottom, and throw it out the window. That's what I want to do. And that's not too bright either. I'd rather put my money somewhere where it could do something for me. You know what I'm saying? It might not be immediately, but I got to think a long term. You know what I'm saying? Like with your salvation. It's immediate that you make the decision, but it's a long term decision at the end of the day. So if I heard some of y'all feeling, I don't apologize. I just want y'all to know the truth. But if you gamble now, don't think that you're not a less of a person than me. I just don't think it's a very intelligent person. And I wouldn't pay a damn dime if you lost everything you had. You know what I'm saying? I'd probably sit you here with a seat, put one of them dummy caps on your head, should do a message. So that person lost every damn thing they had. I'm not getting them a dime. Because I don't gamble. I just don't do it. It's just not worth my time. I'd rather put myself behind something to be a little more productive. And there's some people watching, they're going to be hurt. And you should be at the end of the day. But I mean, the day, y'all just kind of decide for yourself what you want to do. Take that money and put that money up and use it for yourself. They say, well, you can lose your money in the stock market. But you can sit down and you can make a conscious decision off something based off of projections, based off of what they've been doing. Anything you do, you're taking a chance. It's just some chance I ain't got. I'm not finna, you know what I do? Wind blowing this way, hard. You know what I ain't finna do? Piss in it. There's a chance I won't get wet. There's a bigger chance I will, so I ain't gonna do it. So y'all try to start putting yourself to do stuff more productive. Do this. Y'all use your sense and say, and this, how y'all thought about this? One of a bunch of y'all get together that gamble and say, listen, why don't we take the money we would have put in there? Let's put this money up and let's start doing this for a period of time and let's try to start using it towards something productive for ourselves. It won't be, don't, and well, a lot of them ain't gonna do it because it ain't lottery money. I can't, we ain't gonna get no billion dollars. You ain't gonna believe it. Hell, you ain't gonna get it anyway. Okay, so in that thought, that's why I'm taking, you know, I, I know the logic. You know how long it's gonna take to get a billion dollars? Yeah, but a little short and they're gonna take you to get it with them people. Yeah. At least you can see where you're putting that. At least you can start to make a country decision. Start looking at building something. I mean, I talk to y'all all the time about that. I, I, see, the lot of things I push my, what, what bothered me with y'all? I have talked to you guys, I don't know how many countless times. Some of y'all, it ain't all of y'all, but just countless time on things y'all could try to do and do. People say, well, we lost doing that, we lost doing it. At least you're making an effort to try to do something for yourself. To get something going, it takes something to do something. There's some loss, I take a lot of loss. I've taken them and still take them and do them. But I keep pushing through things because at the end of the day, I know what my goal and what my objective is. I'm not finna walk up nobody counter and get no pencil, piece of paper, write something down. And then that unless I'm gonna write on him, give me a thousand original, I'm gonna blow your damn brains out. That's the only thing around that paper. Right now. That's the only thing around that paper. And that's how I know I'm gonna come out immediately. The only thing around that other than that, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna waste my time with it. I watch too many of them losers do it. You know what I'm saying? Could have put that money somewhere. That's why I wanna teach her. Let's start looking at what we could do, be more proactive, trying to build up. I wanna build a nation. Okay, I'm building mud pies, I play for In the Bill of Nation, you got to get your people to stop making uh, unconscious decisions. Because these are not conscious decisions. I just explained y'all, how many when I explain y'all about buying a ticket, looking at everything, they make a lot more sense? I want you to be practical. Some of them say, no, well, they probably see something else. Keep doing the dollar, hell, and get rich. But I, I can't figure why you ain't got it yet. It's just things y'all really have to look at if you're going to do it. You got to set up the money. You got to set yourself up. And you got to be willing to go in all the way. If I was going to do it, I'm telling you, I'd go in the thing. If I'm, if I'm going to play the lottery, I'd probably walk in. I'd do 20. I'm talking 20,000. I won't waste no time. I can't afford to lose like that. I got to go all the way if I'm going to do it. I can't waste no time. Just go on in. Just give me every damn thing you got in. I'm going to be scratching forever. I do my numbers. I'm going to lose too much playing with one and two. That money lost and gone. I'm going to lose some, but there's no way I can lose everything because I got all the tickets. See what I do? I'm going to tell you how I do. I walk. I little dumb ass sat down and get a couple of them tickets and keep playing around looking. So what you doing? Man, ain't got nothing. Let me get through. Let me get that whole roll. 
So they got averages in here with these things. Let dumbass keep playing. Let Cumberland come in here and watch us to their head. You got anything? Man, no, nah, man. Damn, that's my 15th ticket. Give me that roll. I'm going to count him. I'm going to do average out how many people done bought him before him who done hit. Tickets should be sticking up inside this store him. Hit ticket, then you look put them back up here. I'm watching. See, I'm a business man. Y'all ass don't think. They trying to think now like that. Oh, I'm thinking the same. I'm, you stinking the same thing. You ain't thinking the same thing. I got to do numbers. I'm a numbers man. And numbers make sense to me to look at. Y'all ain't hitting. They, they don't say, man, I want to buy them tickets. Ain't nobody hitting. That's exactly what I wanted. Because they, listen, people ain't going to keep buying unless they hit. They'll reel them in and make them get it. My number is, I need that whole roll. I can't lose. I can get enough money back, I can recover. So if you're going to do it, you got to get your science down on how you come through. And you got to walk through this and do it. People with money, that's why they don't do it. They know to do it. Science is, you got to know where to go and how to hit and how to do it. You got to be moving. You got to know how to keep moving. And you want to really make your money. See, they'll be greedy. Y'all keep trying to go for the one billion. There's some people know how to make a living out of going here and getting their money and doing it. I gave you two sides of the story. You do it. You like the second side better. I say, put your money together, sit down and come up with some country. Let's build a nation. I really want to build a nation. A nation would allow us an opportunity where you don't have to gamble. You can have a free and with a free opportunity that if you worked hard and did what you were supposed to do and played your part, you have a real chance of success. That's yours. No gambling, no playing. This is actually your opportunity to win. Niggas don't want that. They just want to pay a damn dollar and win everything, which makes no sense. Why wouldn't you want to put your money together and build a nation that allows you liberties and opportunities to grow, to produce, become owner, to gain wealth, help, mm -mm, a ticket? That's just me. If I y'all, I wouldn't listen to me anyway. Y'all know I, like, I just like to talk anyway. I, I don't have any idea what I'm doing talking. People don't listen to me anyway. But I just try to help y'all out. Just tell you, if you're going to do something, do, be real productive about it. You know what I'm saying? You got to. How many, don't we lose all the time? How many y'all lose look like every time you look around? Why would you be in the line? Why would you, what, 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 so if you know that, why would you get in that line? They right down there, tell, they know we lose all the time. So I'm getting a line to lose? I can't do that. The only sense it may send in line is to get that pencil and round the back of there, give me everything, I'm going to blow your damn brains out. If they ain't what you're writing, put that pencil and paper down. That's, I mean, I just can't do it. I ain't got nothing to lose. But again, I mean, that's just me just talking. Don't pay that no attention. I'm going to try to move on. Ain't that chain? Got the same old rotten people in place. A lot of them in the way, and they don't do no better. It's just where we at, but you got to learn how to navigate. That's all I'm trying to teach y'all, how to navigate. Get through it to Mr. your hook and get back here and get us out there play. I really would like to try to build a nation, though. I really would like to. I did get a chance to see some of that um, the comedy. What was that thing was, Tim? What was that? He, he brewed the Negro or something. Man, he got it. I don't know. Kyrie, they should have been got rid of your head. If that's what you listen to, man, that, man, I ain't never seen so many inaccuracy in my life. These folks, why, how a woman had two kids with the same man and one of them a white nation, one of them a black nation? Just stop it. Just stop it. Why don't these people just stop it? Why they keep trying to teach all these people were white? Hebrew is like always teaching the wrong stuff. Just stop. Stop it. These folks just tell, just stop. Not to mention, guess who came there to us? The serpent. The folks ain't got no better sense. They used to be one new count. He ain't never been one new count. He ain't never stood one. Now he ain't never stood one. When I first met you, had dread. You had one of them damn sticks. Like Rafiki. Correction. I know your father. You were one of them. Man, these folks come up here, man, stop it. Man, I, man, I. People know just enough to mess people up. I've been on a lot of folks that know just all that. When you watched it, this will change. I don't even, I said, damn. I said, here we go. 
These folks just tell folks stuff. Just stop it. Just stop it. Say to the man, Daddy, just stop it. Just stop it. They always in action. Always in action. They just get stuff going. That's what get a lot of our people hurt out here. They watch these damn film strips and start thinking these folks really did all the work. These folks will mess you up. Y'all take your time. Go watch it and come in here with this. you see. Go watch it and come in here with I'm going to run you right off this property. Come on, that food. Come on here with one of them big old sticks. I don't, I don't be listening. That's why I don't listen to these folks. Just stop it. Everybody want to make a fool out of us. The woman done slept with the snake. Just stop it. The book clearly tell you that Adam, Adam knew his wife and she conceived. Stop it. Where's the version that you got? They just get you going. They just get the man. And they just, just joining everybody Hebrew. Just stop it. Stop it. I don't know what they, oh my goodness. I don't know how they join all these folks in. It's a mess. But anyway, that's what we got to do. Now everybody wants. Everybody one of us. It's just, I don't get it. It's, it's just crazy. It's so strange. This man set aside himself for people to himself. And it was for a reason. The Abari, they'll put Ibri, that they'll come from the Hebrew. Why they use the word Hebrew? Hebrew has nothing to do with no color. I don't know why they say that. They're trying to say folk had called themselves something they came up talking about that meant they said they were black. Why in the hell would I be sitting in Africa telling folks I'm black? Everybody in damn Africa black. Why would I name myself and say it means black? Nobody ever done that. We don't have nothing in the book that tells us called nothing black. The word is kashak. We don't, it makes no sense that these people would name themselves something called black. We got these colors when we mixed in with these people. Nobody never identified themselves by no color. Even with leprosy, we ain't called them white, we called it leprosy. Just stop it. These folks just stop it. They just, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Just, and they done messed that man up. He done look. Because see, what they get these guys, these guys have education. And they use their education to run through here and think they got something. When you're dealing with this book, you have to really make sure that you understand how to be rocked and spiritual. Because they run through something and they grab something and they start conceiving stuff in their mind. They listen to other people. They put stuff and think these people done some research. You don't have no book telling like that. Everybody had that book. What book you got? Anyone y'all read a book that the, the Bible or anyone in Burden that tell you that that woman had sex with this snake? They ain't read it. No, they ain't read it. And they ain't read it. Who behind that copy? What did that copy be? Just stop it. They get it going, make a fool out of fool. It's just, it's just too much getting it going. I just want to take our time. My concern is I just want to make it in and be saved. That's it. I, that's why I don't feel, I can't fellowship everything. I ain't got time for no foolishness like that. That's crazy. And now the man messed up. I ain't even did nothing. I don't blame that damn film still. I'd have suspended your ass. <laughs> Once I looked at him, you ain't playing no more basketball. Huh? I told him I looked at film. You're not trying to play. Because you too dumb. If this is what you were looking at, if this is what you what, just the fact you said, you should have never told nobody about this. That should have never went nowhere. Tell me that hurt some people. Damn thing hurt me when I seen it. Cause we don't need no, cause I'm telling you what bad. When you start spewing bad information and your purpose, that's scary to me. What, you can't set people off triggering pe people. People always take hold of something bad. You know what I mean? People watching that video, that documentary because I said, I said, I wonder what it's about. Find a, I gotta put a little that. And damn thing too, boy. I see the niggas inside the room were talking about it. I, I already know some stuff. I said, them niggas down in that room. Oh, yeah. Them niggas, they name they just Juju Fruit and whatever name they have. I said, yeah. I already know some stuff. I said, how far they going to go on? It ain't. Y'all go ahead and watch it because I want you to think I ain't saying watch it. You sound to watch it. I want you to come back and tell me she had sex with that snake. See how many times you'll be back on that problem. That's going to be your last visit. Just watch it and come on and have it and say, yeah. Yeah, that was so, I was so glad to learn about her having sex with that snake. You finna go. My brother Jack called. My brother Jack called. Come, 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 come. You gotta go. Come, come on. I'm getting them straight out here. You can't. 
I want y'all to watch it though, just so you can get out yourself. I want y'all to go ahead and watch because it don't take nothing. I want you to sit down. I want you to watch the intelligent. I always use your intelligent because you need to know for yourself when you watch this stuff. And just see, these guys that do some research for some things. Most study guys get they just go copy other people's information, paste, put, put stuff up and do it. It's just, it, it just, it, I don't know these folks. This. We just need to get right. I just know that. At the end of the day, we need to get right. Too much going on, too much inaccuracy, too much misinformation, and too many people don't care about people. I care about people, white people, black people. Well, I want to call them colors. Say people in general. You got to be able to, you, you, if, you're, if you're human, you should have it. it, it and I've been guilty in the past. This hadn't been recently anything in the past. I'm not actually sitting back, well, this is recently, not actually sitting back and considering. We all attach to one another. Even people of other religions, we all attach to one another. You know, everybody is seeking um, a confirmation. Everybody is. People want either, you know, that what you're doing right, we all look for something or a justification for what we do. We all do. And it's unfortunate that um, some of us have, you know, found um, solace in things that are not just accurate or correct. And um, I talk to you guys, and um, I'm as realistic as possible when I read and I tell y'all guys where I'm at about it, because you need to know that. You know, how I see it, I'll explain it to you. I'll show it to you, and I'll say, let's sit down. And I want us to be practical. And I want us to think like the people he dealt with. Does it just make sense that a noise came out of air and people just started following something? People follow based off of patterns. People follow it based off of, you know, information that's been passed down and then certain things come along and kind of gave a conclusion to or came and gave um, a reality of and that's how you kind of follow. Nobody just kind of fell into a religion in a sense. People saw for me that there is a true foundation to a spirituality and everyone else has more or less created, you know what I'm saying, has created from it. You know what I'm saying? I think it comes down to like people say, well, I don't want to look like I'm following another nigga. So you just get your own, but your whole pattern line goes along to match up with what we're doing. Um, I want truth at the end of the day, and I want, I want to make sure I secure my salvation. I want to make sure I understand what salvation is. I don't want to fabricate something in my mind. I don't want to fabricate something in my heart. And coming from Christianity, I see how that can be easily done. I don't want to just be easily moved by something. Y'all got what I'm saying? I want to make sure what I'm doing is right. I'm telling people for years with every religion, we all fight to argue with each other on what's right or what's correct. There are things I, um, I feel that um, should solidify what you do. That should be a practical base. It don't make sense that, you know, hey, right now, everybody hypothetical, just take your clothes off, hypothetical. Take your clothes off for real. I, I, I'm gonna lose it. Hypothetically, just like take clothes off. This is from a spirit. You know, all of us take our clothes and all of us finna start hunching on each other. Here. That, just in your mind, it's not practical. You know, you know, when people sit down and really look at what they're doing, you know, what he gives us makes sense. You know what I'm saying? It has a real basis. It makes sense for a man to be with his wife, for a wife to be with her husband. It just makes sense. It makes sense for kids to obey their parents. It makes sense that I shouldn't do anything to you that I don't want done to me. How many, how many of y'all, that don't sound reasonable. I should be able to kick this man in his chest and knock him five rows back, and he shouldn't kick me back because he's going to burn in hell because that's not the love of God. How many of y'all, that don't make sense? Really, you shouldn't raise your hand. You're in America. It has to make sense. So it didn't make sense when I told you me doing it to him, but it happens to you all the time, and for some reason you just told me it don't make sense. So it makes sense when he told it to you or he does it to you. See, that's what I'm trying to get us to realize. A lot of things he sold us hadn't even been practical. How has it been practical that I've been deemed for hell this whole time under him? Based off of his teaching, based off of his ideology. You know what I'm saying? Everything, his practicality is what he's given me. Whatever you look at as practical basically comes from him. You hadn't had a chance to source back to look at how your people as a nation operated. What, were your actual, what was your culture? What was your language? What were your laws? You know what I'm saying? How did you interact? 
These are things you don't worry about, huh? Our communities were tight knit. We lived in tents. We were all right among one another. Now we get some. Everybody want seventy five hundred acres, and the nearest and the nearest neighbor sixty five miles from them. The world ain't big enough for everybody to have seventy five hundred acres. You know what I'm saying? But it's big enough for all of us to enjoy some tranquility and have some freedom and have some liberties and have some respect for one another. You don't have to. Uh, agree with another person's religion, but I think that everybody needs to have some form of respect for one another. As long as your religion don't cross no bounds with me, or don't interact against my Allahim, then we good. I don't want to mate your religion with mine. Whatever your religion belief is, you keep me inside. I don't force I don't want to go in. Uh, you ought to go on the street. People on the street got to trust to do what they want to do. People, I'm not going to nobody to church and kick no doors in and teach them nothing. You where you at because that's what you want to hear. So like you guys have the, is it fair for somebody, for some Islamic people to kick door to come in and try to preach and try, that's not what I believe. So why would it make sense for the four sides on somebody else? Let's give other people that same right, opportunity. Christian, whatever it is, you believe in what you believe, that's what you want to believe. We all have sat and we've heard differently. Have anybody listened or practiced Islam? Any forms of it? Hebrew, Israelite, Christianity, non-denominational, uh, holiness or whatever it might, all of them fall on the Catholicism. I mean, all these different things we've done, we did them at our own, you know, judgment. And people should have that opportunity. But all I'm saying is, let's look at what's true. That's all I want, what's truth at the end of the day. And I, I'll be honest with you, I'm just stupid enough to convince that Mr. Huawei is the truth. Unless otherwise can be proved differently. Y'all got it? I'm sold on it's true. I walk back through what they have and I sat down. I don't just brush away. I said, let's look at this. Let's look at it from every angle and every end. Let's go. This is our salvation. We're saying we're going to die with this. Doesn't it make sense to make sure it makes sense to you? Uh, maybe you should try to think about it when you get in the grade, when it's too late to change in ideas. When it's too late to get something right. So if we hear, it makes sense for us to exercise that time and use it wisely and constructively to say, what makes sense? Same thing I'm saying with the lottery. Let's just do it. What makes sense? Take all those people out of their line and say, listen, everyone else want to win. Correct? Yeah. It's not practical that everyone else in their line. But you tell them, niggas hold their head. They don't want to, they want to tell them, get in the line and say, listen, why all of us in this line? Because every one of us want to win. It's not practical that every one of us going to win. How about we create a system where everybody can win? Listen, they're going to turn off. They ain't going to look. I don't want to hear about it. This there, a con. This a scheme. Hold on. Con and scheme is what you're doing in this line, nigga. This your con right here. Because that's how they, it looks good. It's got lights. And the government bags it. So they automatically think it's got to be right. Think about it. It was people look down on people um, for buying beer on Sunday. All the things would look that wrong. Now that you go to the store, buy, nobody look at these people now in the store buying it. All the stuff people used to do, hide and keep back. People snuck around doing prohibition and snuck around because they would look down upon them. Hell, they made it legal. You can go to the store and get it. Come right out and park your car. Go through the drive through Put it right on the corner where folks sit at the red light. No shame. What change? Your oppressor. He showed you, I control your right and wrong. I control your right and wrong. You don't have one of your own. Everything that you think and these people that hate me, they hate me because master told them to hate me. Tell them, say, ask them, say, say them answer the question. What, what did he do to you? I just hate him. What did he do to you? I just can't stand it. Okay, let's try it again. What did he do? Does he owe you money? Has he slept with your wife, your kids, or slept with your mama? What, what we got? Now, some of y'all, you know, that was old me, your mama. <laughs> Your mom was doing something back then. <laughs> but anyway, you see what I'm saying? People hate me because they have been programmed. Just like you are programmed, we've all been programmed. So I come against and I fight against the ideology of the program because I look at, I held myself in condemnation for so many years based off of this man's program. <laughs> man, I'm for, listen, man. Somebody drop a $100. I'm walking around here and stuff. Now, because you don't do that, God looking. Skim, you, you lost $100. Skim, 
Excuse me, love. So I can feel good about it. Think about it. I feel good about myself. Why that man won't come give me my land back? Right. You know why he look at it? I took it from you and there's no condemnation. But I'm condemned anytime I don't go do something that he says you're supposed to do. And he calls it the good Samaritan law that we still don't know. There's no town ever been called Samaritan. I don't know what this man is talking about. He made the name of the place is Shumron. We don't know anything. He creates this thing and makes you run around and say, you know what? You are a good Samaritan. They had the same bastard that came to Africa and raped us. Now they come in and call themselves a Samaritan. See, he can make himself look good. He can make himself look pure. He makes himself look innocent. He makes himself look like the truth. The criminal is the judge and the police and the prosecutor. The victim is the person being prosecuted. Whew, here we are. This is the world you live in. I'm telling you, he works a system to make you feel bad about yourself. I try to tell you something. You think people say, you know what, that makes sense. Why don't we put some money together and try to come up with some constructive? The same amount of money we would have put behind the lottery to try to make something here. Let's try to make something that we know that will create something for us. They say, well, what do we lose? Tell me like you lose every time you're in that line. At least I lost on trying to build a nation. What were you trying to do? See, I'm telling you how the system works from Yahuwah. It don't make sense to give you nothing unless it's going to benefit other people. Hello? Wow. Who gave Yahuwah that son? Yahushua. Who gave it to him? Let's talk. Who gave Yahuwah the father, the Abba? Who gave him the son? Nobody. He gave him himself. And what did he do when he got him? He said, that Malkuth he got, empire, kingdom. Who gave it to him? Who? He gave it to himself, made it for himself. And he going to stand it by himself. Who, who, who going to stand it? Him and his son? It makes sense that everything he got, he has to share it. But you get all your stuff to yourself. It's just practical. I'm just doing practical like you. It just makes sense. That's why a lot of folks, that's why you want to know why you don't have stuff. Because that's how you think. It's all mine. It only makes sense to give it to you because it's going to benefit somebody else. He said he made the, the rocks for it to be inhabited. Once he came here, he was the only one here. He could have kept it for himself. He said, I ain't making it for myself. I made it be inhabited by other people. So everything he got, he wants you to have. That Ruach, that's his spirit. All his for him. I want you to have it. 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 I want you to, I want you to have it. As many of y'all that are do, he said what I asked. I want you to have it. But for some reason in your mind, it may seem for you to have everything in yourself. Huh? That's just why you stay in the condition you're in. All right, come on. We got to give it a roll. I'm all ready up. Go ahead and blow so they can get up. They can wake up. Listen. <laughs> Mm. Yes. So, what time is it? Seven thirty-five. All right, come. We got to roll. I don't have me up here going. I know we got to do Romans 15, 4. Son, 
for whatever Nikata before mm -hmm. Nikata to, to lama us to teach us to show us to instruct us just like what we were talking about now I think what what happened to us is um the system made us selfish it's hard to share when you don't have anything so you think about you took a people that had everything who was taught to open his arm wide to the poor y'all got it he told you to open your arms wide to the poor. So it made sense why Yahushua came to the poor. What was he doing on the two? He said, because they ain't going to never cease out the land. Therefore, you need to open your arms wide for them. That care and sharing program process we lost. We, we, with, with the spirituality part of like being able to read the, the bar, the word, and then understand concepts. There's also some practical things he gave us without having to endeavor into trying to figure a uh, complexity out. The simple of a heart in you, like I heart myself. Which means I first had to do what? And guess what they don't teach us in churches, religions? How to heart <clears throat> ourselves. How to love ourselves. They'll tell you about possessing things. Things don't mean you're a hobby yourself. That you have an attachment, you have a care. That I'm indebted to myself simply because I did the harm and the detriment to myself. So I owe myself the opportunity to be fair with myself and to be as real as I can be with myself and make sure I really understand. There are a lot of things I did without understanding life. There are things I process I understand now, you know, where I was, but I didn't understand it during the time of, of um, implementing what the damage or situation was that I was doing. Uh, and now I want to make sure that we do set back and we consider that. Because we're, 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 we're reading um, the Sefer, the word, the books, the scrolls, uh, the Kitavim, the writings. Um, and in doing that, I think to um, really comprehend it, we need to have uh, knowledge of oneself. You really need to have knowledge of oneself. And, and knowledge of, how many of y'all know yourself? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many of y'all, you still kind of figuring yourselves out? Okay, that's good, that's good. And, 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 and that's good, because you want to be honest with yourself. Maybe the people that raised their hand and said they know themselves, they probably hadn't really thought in depth about themselves. <clears throat> knowing just all your capabilities as well as all your imperfections and, and knowing your limitations. When I'm saying that, because when you're walking through here, it's easy to read something to throw you. And you can, you can fall from your steadfastness. A lot of people, as well as gaining feet and strength, also lose it. Because in reading, they look at not being too sure of themselves. Some people, I can't trust myself really around certain things or certain thing, ideas. I can't look at certain things because I know what I'll do or what I can do. So it's good to know your limitations. Then it's learning how to kind of, good to kind of learn where to strengthen yourself at. Because those limitations will be things you'll be challenged on the most. You won't probably get rid of all of them, but the more you can um, strengthen yourself in those areas, the better you'll be. Because just like, um, and, and why a lot of us wind up getting the defeats we get, because a lot of us don't know. Or a lot of us lie to ourselves. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get strong. I'm telling you, I'm going to. Listen, I'm going to be so strong. Y'all ain't going to. You know what I'm trying to convince? Myself. Mm -hmm. Myself. Let's, 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 let's do something. If whatever was written before was written to teach me, and I can get a visual, and I can get an understanding from it, um, and all that's coming to kind of give me um, a comfort and give me um, a hope and expected end, then I really need to make sure where I'm at. I hadn't always been here. Um, confessing is a good place to start with, simply because confessing gets you to down to the real nitty-gritty of who you are. 
what you've done, where you come from, and then you kind of can think back on your cell phone. How did you get yourself into those situations? Whether knowingly or unknowingly, um, being led by other people, influences, um, you know, just all those different things. You need to consider them. I think just confessing what you've done and not understanding how you committed it is not a good idea. Because I just confessed, let's say I confessed um, drinking. How did not only now, am I confessing drinking because you guys look at drinking as wrong? Or is that something that I honestly believe? Oh yeah, we do that. We've confessed things not because we actually thought they were wrong. We might have confessed them because we had some hurts behind them, but that don't necessarily mean we actually believe, you know, that it's practical, that it's wrong, and it's quote unquote hell bound. And I think that's how a lot of people, just like people give them a confess to, just use masturbation. Are they confessing to masturbation because we believe it's wrong or they believe it's wrong? Who got the answer? Who got the answer? That's right. We believe it's wrong. That's why they go back and recommit it. And what happens, and I, I just, we be, can we just be real with each other? Okay. That, that's your hurt. Because now you're trying to live up to other people's expectations. You're not living up. So, so the things that um, we gather are wrong, we need to gather them as being wrong based upon Yahuwah's ideas and expectations. Can we look up the definition for idea? Before we do, let me finish this. Just go ahead and read it. No, don't read from now. You're reading, oh, you're reading from, oh, okay, go ahead. Yes, sir. So that through endurance and through the nakum of the Ketubim, we might have tikva. Tikva, inspect their way or accord. Can we look up idea? Let's, let's. Idea, a thought or suggestion as to a possible course of action or to the aim or purpose. So when I'm looking at idea, I, I guess for me, I want to encompass um, how do I see, um, how do I see um, Mr. Yahuwah's advice? Um, are they practical for me? Are they essential for salvation? There's some things I could tell you. Let me, let me say this with the lottery. I gave suggestions on the lottery, and I gave my opinion on them, okay? Now, does that make my opinion mean that you're going to go to Sheol if you play the lottery? I never said that. I never said that. I made that clear, didn't I? I said, there are a lot of things I have opinions on. I said, I just keep them to myself. But I let you guys know how I saw it. And I explained to you some other things, why, the logic, the practicality of it. And I just look at us as a people have taken so many losses. And to me, people in the line that really care about themselves and people, somebody just stopped saying, let me ask you something, brother, sir. Uh, how, is it really practical that both of us can win and nobody lose and for us as a nation having lost so much that can, that if, if America decided right now to give every quote unquote black man and woman say $500 million it couldn't pay for what was done there's no monetary value you can put on it there's no paper you can sign there's no law you can invoke there's no free education program. You can't give back the lives you took. You can't give back that credibility. You can't take, how do I unrape you? How do I unrape millions of women and men and children? How? By what amount of money? By what proclamation? By what declaration? By what apology can I give to apologize for the raping? Not only deal with the murdering and the kidnapping, just the raping 
of millions and millions of black women and men and children. We're not just leaving it to one sex. We're not even leaving it to one age category. This has been a constant. So we always look for a monetary reasoning to justify or to say this repairs it. And it says something about your credibility that you think that the picture of a bunch of dead old white slave owning crackers can pay for the detriment that you still suffer today. You know how many people that have been raped still have nightmares? But if they got to check it or fix it. Y'all have been people that have been raped that still can't be comfortable with the opposite sex because they have been forcefully raped in the sexual intercourse? Or how many women and men have gone to the same sex because of the fear of the opposite sex? And all I need these crackers to do is give me a check. We good. This insults your intelligence. And see, while you're begging, you know what the white man said? It really wasn't a crime, was it? Because you're asking for money. So really, you're nothing but a convenient prostitute. See, they don't know when they talk. That's why I told you, these folks going to act for reparation. What, that's why I told you, we need to talk. We need to talk. Because what you're saying, you don't be careful. You tell your oppressor that it can be bought. Certain things you go to court for, and you're saying there's a problem. They're saying, I want this money. The judge can see straight through it. This really ain't a problem. You're just trying to get money. We'll say there is no amount of money he can pay. Anything he gives is nowhere near restitution. There are too many other things been done, and it doesn't make sense. So let me get this straight. Hypothetically, I raped Ain Smith. She wants... $500 million for her cause, her hurt, her pain, her suffering. I can rape again to give her $500 million. That's what it cost last time. Because you keep putting a monetary value on your damage. Uh, and you keep processing things the wrong way. You, you can't allow this man to think there's an amount of money he can pay to fix what he's done to you. Separation has to happen. I can't live. What? What? How many? If you've been raped, how does gonna? She still has to sit here by the guy that raped her. I gave her money. Just shut up. You got your money. Quit complaining, nigga. How many people be tormented if they ran into their raper, and you were stuck right there beside them? You do this every day. You sat beside and you function with people that have raped you. And all you keep saying is give you money, and you look down on the prostitute. Can you believe this trashy whore? Gives her body up for money. And what exactly what you asking the oppressor for? You filthy whore. That's how he thinks about you, not me. I'm a victim too. A thought or a suggestion as to a possible course of action, okay? Okay, so th this is important, because I, I want to tell you how I look at it. Everything he gives me, I look at as an idea, as a course of action. Let's look at the first time the idea came up. See if that's some um, 2 and 14, Barashit. Barashit, they call it Genesis. This is not all, I just want you to kind of think about it. A lot of people hate me. And I want to tell the people that hate me, please, if you could, I need you to take it up a notch because I feel like I'm getting stronger. <laughs> I'm getting strong. I need that hate. Mm -hmm. I need... <sighs> it builds me up. Somebody mm -hmm. got to hate me. All right, let's see. 2 and 14. 14, 16. We'll go to 16. I put 14. 16. Let's see what it's on. Let's see. Listen. Yahuwah Elohim Amar to the east saying, from any odds of the gun, you may eat freely. Uh-huh. Come on. But from the odds of the knowledge of Tub and Rosha, you shall not eat from it. For in the yun that you eat from it, you shall surely move. Okay. Well, we're looking at a command now. Command is an order. This is pretty much an order. And I've been pretty much when you order somebody to do something, that kind of make you like you're their master. 
got that you kind of look at ownership. But at the same time, I kind of look at it as um, I'm suggesting something at the same time to you because with the command, I didn't take away your ability. Okay? You think about it. Now, you eat from this tree, and I'm telling you not to do it because you're going to surely die. I will not take away your ability to make that choice. Lord, if you would right now, just take away my hands so I don't touch nothing that ain't got no business. Close my eyes that I don't see nothing wrong. Fix my eyes I don't see nothing wrong. Give me saltpina, Peters, so I don't ever fornicate, commit. Man, I'm not giving you no saltpina. I'm not taking no hands off. I'm not closing your eyes. You don't see everything the way it is. I've given you what's life and I've given you what's moot. Now, you have to sit down and process whether or not this idea works for you. Because everything been laid on the table. It's a command, it's an order. It's like with us, when we tell our kids to do something, we take stuff away. We say, you ain't getting nothing to eat. Do we still put food on there? We've taken the food. We've taken away with it. Because I've, I've given you this with the punishment. This is not going to be given. I'm going to take away access to things. Isn't that right? I'm going to take the keys and put the keys up. We ain't going to leave the keys and say you can, you ain't going to do it. We're going to take away the ability for you to be able to do it as much as in our ability. But here, he left it. So I don't look at it just as a command. It's an idea. Although I made you, because what we typically do is somebody tell us not to do something. Do it. How about if I told you if you do it, you're going to die? Now, this is an opportunity for you to choose whether or not you like life. Now, now we start to move and first are uh, getting life first. Let's understand life and for how he saw it. For him, this man right here, let's just be honest. What this man did, any one of us done the same thing. When did man seen a bad day before that? When did man seen a storm? Hurricane, earthquake. When did man seen poverty, starvation, droughts? Hard to process it. I've been it was hard to process the dying thing. Been living all my life. Hard to process it. So a lot of things are hard for him to process. Even though being told and made, I don't take away the ability. Now, he, now where he moved him to and knowing death and to understand death at the same time, now this is what he will offer. The day he eat up, what he's going to do? Surely die. Let's go to 317 right quick. Sit up on 317. Same book. Let's see. Listen. Then to Adam he said, because ye have shama to the call of your shah, and have eaten from the ox about which I mar you, saying, you shall not eat from it. All I is the Adamar because of you. Cursed. The ground is cursed because of you. Mm -hmm. in, to in toil you shall eat of it all the Yamim of your Kai. Mm-hmm. And thorns and thistles shall grow for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. You do what now? And you shall eat the plant of the field. Go ahead. By the sweat of your pine, mm -hmm. you shall eat lacom, till you return to the Adama, because from it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. So now we start looking at quality of life. We're dealing with how you know you're dying. I, Cause this is the thing. To leave him now, and you can allow the same thing to happen, he's going to die. He's going to die because it's been told, all he told him. The process that he need to understand exactly how this is going to work for him. You've been eating at a luxury without any hard labor, anything being involved behind it. But now I want you to process you dying. Your process of dying is things around you aren't working for you the same way. The way, you eat, the way you eat is even in tall. Troubles always surround you. Things are happening, showing you that you're dissipated, that you're leaving here. He in the gun, he couldn't process that if you left him there. It'd be hard to process. It's a joke. It's a game. But when I remove you from where you are, from comfort of life, from shalom, from peace, from health, and I put you somewhere and your health fell in, and you start to see how you get your food, when you start seeing how things are working for you, you process. You know what they may have to look at every day? You know what they got to say, Buster? I'm dying. And the only way to get that was to be outside 
the parameters of Elohim. Based off of him giving a command, which goes along as, this is a pretty damn good idea, what he said. Because now I'm processing this on the outside to look at the value in this man's suggestion and in his Amar. Hello? Yes, With Yahushua and the, let's see something. Is that, um, 14, 20, is that the book of Yahushua? Is that 1428? Let's say that 1428. They call it Joshua. That boy, the boy, suggestive conversation. Yeah. Who's sure? Might be 28, 14. Oh, 24, 14, 22. Was it 14? Should have told him to choose you today. Was it? 24. What's that? 28, 24, 14. Listen. No, 14. At 15. Gotta be Jahi. He don't press a fight me. All right, listen. Now, therefore, do what? Yahweh Yahuwah, and serve him in sincerity and in Amat. And do what? Put away the mighty ones which you are, are both served on the other side of the Nahar and in Mizraim, and serve Yahuwah. Now, let's go up a little bit. Let's see what it, 10 tells us <clears throat> since we're here. How about that? Because it just don't make sense that that's the first thing come out your mouth. Now, fear Yahuwah. The only way in a conversation like that would make sense is I had to look at previously what was stated before that. So to tell me, if I tell you today, fear Yahuwah and put away these things, then that means you didn't have a fear there before that there are other things you were doing and there's been a lot of detriment that happened. Now, based off the detriment, now I'm giving you a corrective measures. Fearing Yahuwah, which is? That's the, no, that's the beginning of wisdom. That's the beginning of wisdom. It makes sense to tell you that. Y'all didn't know that. In uh, Marshal Lee 1 and about 3, he told you to fear Yahuwah, not 1 and about 4 or 5. He said to fear you. That's the beginning. See, a lot of y'all want to be wisdom. Have wisdom. You can't have it because first of all, you don't fear it. You got to fear him. Now he said, that's, that's where wisdom starts at. Ah, like, oh, man, he ain't them. I just walk up. He's a big old, like a big pussycat. That's the wrong conversation. He ain't, and ain't going to work. You walk up to a pussy. you don't walk up to a pussycat the way you walk up on Ari. Ari going to rip you apart. You walk up on a pussycat because he ain't going to hurt nothing. It's a play thing. He's not a play thing. He said, never do that. Whenever he spoke to him, it was always about getting fear first. That first thing they did, they feared they were removed. That was the first part of wisdom. He was giving them a mark. On the way to get you to understand it, first thing you need fear to go with it. Because what's, what's connected to what you're saying? You're giving out a whole lot of stuff, talking about do this, do this. What, what's going to happen? Huh? What, what's all that there for, boy? I'm like, what's all that smoke up there for? You know, he's like, I need to show you why it's smoking. I need to show you. Need, this thing, it's all attached to my work. There needs to be fear. You guys don't have it. That's why you guys can keep going against it. You need fear. So now he just told him, first they told him to fear your whore and start talking about putting away the thing. Then he associated with the people. Come out of Mizraim with the others done. Let's see what he said. Listen. But I was not willing to listen to Balaam, so he, great, so he greatly baraka you, and I deliver you from his hand. See that? He said, I was not willing to listen. Because, you know, Balaam, Balaam was hired to curse you. He let him know, I wouldn't listen to him. I turned around and I barack you. I bestowed a gift or a benefit on you besides cursing you. He asked me to, but I wouldn't do it. What happened? You crossed the Yardan and came to Jericho, and the inhabitants of Jericho fought against you. And? The Amorites <coughs> and the Perizzites and the Canaanites, Canaanites and the Kittites and the Jer Gergazites and the Kukazites. Kuk Shiites. Kayites. Chiites. And the Yebusites, thus I gave them into your hand. Mm -hmm. Then I sent the hornet before you, and I drove them out from before you, even to even the two Malachim of the Amorites, but not by your sword nor by your bow. Mm -hmm. Come on. I gave you an arras on which you had not labored, and, and cities which you had not built, 
and you kai in them, and you are eating of the vineyards and olive groves which you did not plant. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, Yahweh Yahuwah, and serve him in sincerity and in a mock. And do what? Put away the mighty ones which you are both served on the other side of the Nahar, and in the and in Mizraim, and serve Yahuwah. Let's see. Yeah. If it seems Rosha in your own to serve Yahuwah, choose for yourselves today whom ye shall serve, whether the mighty ones which you are both served, which were on the other side of the Nahar, or the mighty one of the Amorites, in whose arites you are Kai. But as for me and my Beth, we shall serve Yahuwah. It is all just an idea. Just an idea. Does it make sense for you to serve the same people, God, who he expelled them out and gave you their land. How does it make sense for you to serve that God? He looked at, what about your fathers now when they was in Mizraim? Those gods didn't deliver them. Those gods kept them in bondage. He gave you something to process. Look at the actions and the average. He said, on one set of people you fought, you didn't even use your sword. He said, I use hornets to drive them That's out right. for you. That's right. To show you the works of Allahim. These were Guin nation that other people fear. He said, I drove them out with hornets. I gave you land that you never even planted. So, you know, when it comes down to us in heaven and the kingdom, I told you nobody does nothing for nothing. nothing. It's impractical just to get something for something. You had to put something in. He said, but I gave you a land you did nothing for. It's not really hard for us to process it because how much work did I don't get to obtain the gun? So it, when we start, this is not impractical. That we can inhabit a mouth cool that somebody already prepared for. Just like when Adam got there, it made sense that everything was there. Oh, would it make sense that you brought it? He told her, and when he brought the firstborn into the arise, what did he say? Let who? All who? A who? Do what? So he said, when he bring him in, so he brought him in, and then everybody else came in later. He would have had to prepare it up. And when I bring him in, you guys are already here. I prepared it for him. That's how the father does. He set up the inheritance for the child before he gets there. He starts to put it in motion. So when he gets here, I already got something set for you. Hello? This is practical how we did things. So we understood that when Yahuwah did things, he prepared them for the air. See, the reason they, they keep our homes dysfunctional and they keep us broken up because we don't have that knowledge anymore. That a father would naturally prepare things for his son, for the heir. That you would set these things up. That's why it's practical that Yahuwah would prepare a place for us. Because we're his benign. We're heirs. So you look the same. He told you when Shaul came, he said, behold, this is the third time I came to you. He said that the children are not the layer for the parents, but... Parents for the children. Wow. Why would he use that? Because everybody knew that the parents' responsibility was to put up for the children. They broke that. They took that away from us. You lost that idea. I struggled and bust my ass. You ain't going to believe it. They got to do the same thing too. So they took away from us. We don't raise our kids up in a sense that they understand that they're quote unquote royalty. You know what I'm saying? They are, they, they are possessors of things. We wrap them up from scrape, rub, big, steal, lie, break, tap, and your ass ain't getting nothing else. And these are our kids. Hello? But he looked at, for him, what he was going to do. Let me tell you, he said, this is what I'm going to do. I went back over some things that happened that you guys clearly knew and were aware of. And now look at where you are now based upon what he's done. But let's just be honest in our servitude. You need to be sincere. See, you can possess and have things and not be sincere. And when you're not sincere, guess what? It's going to show. He didn't just tell him to serve him. Let's do it in sincerity. Let's see what sincerity is, please. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. I want to get it right. And the way we're going to look at getting this thing right is sitting down and being practical with ourselves. 
making sure this is something you even want to do. Don't just do something because you've just been doing it all your life. Do something different. At the end of the day, you got to be good with your decisions. Nobody else. You got to be good with them. You got to care about you. You got to love you. People are going to love you if you do what they want you to do. Do what you want them to do. If you do what they want you to do. Anytime you know what people want to do, then people become critics of what you're doing. People criticize me because I won't do what they want me to do. I won't teach them about Jesus. I'm not going to teach my people to be a slave anymore and serve no, serve no slave master. We're going to serve Yahuwah. He has a liberty. He's able to. I want somebody to be in on it, make sense that. He's going to be fair. I'm not going to serve nobody not going to be fair with me. If you tell me this is a repercussion of what I've done, then it, please let me see what I've done and see if it's practical. Hello? Okay, let's see. Sincerity. The quality of being free from pretense, deceit, or hypocrisy. And the truth is, we have not been free from pretense, deceit, or hypocrisy. Hello? See, now, Shaul told us about this in the book of Philippians, the first chapter. He talked about how some were preaching, preaching Yahushua. He said, not a sincerity. He said he was looking to try to add affliction to his bonds. He did admit doing whatsoever, whether in pretense or not, that Yahushua would preach. He said, I day in, I do rejoice. That the fact that his name will be in pre, but he let it be known that everybody now honors and they're not sincere. That so many people are doing in pretense and hypocrisy. This is something we don't want to do. Now, in the book of Yaakov, you know what he told us to do? Hands. A hob. What does a hob going to answer the question? What did he tell us to do? That's right. Laying aside all God and hypocrisy. Why would he tell us to do that? Why would you call, they call James, tell us to lay aside all hypocrisy? See if that's 1 in 18. Because why would the man tell us to serve in sincerity? Why would he tell them to serve in sincerity if they're in the land? You should be good to be a hypocrite. Let me tell you what happened. A lot of y'all going to get time. You'll have time here. You just won't, it won't count for any time served. So we're trying to get time served. We're basically in a prison. Time served count. Some folks just doing time. It ain't count for nothing. You know what I'm saying? I want man to count me a time served. Y'all got it. So let's look at what he told us. One 18, let me say. One 18, 17, let me say. Oh, good. Uh, 17, 17, uh, 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 Lay inside all guile and malice. See, with meekness, then grab the word which is able to save. What am I thinking? Why am I thinking you're cold? 17. 3 and 17, you're cold. Okay. That's you're going to play off of something. Make it 15. 3 and 15, you're cold. They call James. 1 and 18, we're talking about laying aside. Hands, next word. What is it? What? Who? I can't hear you. Yeah. I know it had to be. It's taking too long. I heard you, Ryan. Go ahead. Finish up. What else? Oh, uh, and the what? Which is what? That's right. Save your soul in the fires. And graft is when something joins together. See, this this is what people don't realize what's important, Ryan, and what you was telling. Because we listen, we don't think. See, the whole part of what Yahuwah was doing was trying to teach them how to graft. They'll do skin graft. They'll take it and they'll put it back and you can't even tell where it was put. And that's what he's saying. Then graft the word, which is able to save your soul. That's what get our life by the word. How man supposed to live? So think about it. If I engraft the word with you and the word don't die, what happened to you? Wow. How is that going to work? That's the way it works, because we've been trying to process it. Well, he told you to lay aside super, all filthy and superfluity, superfluity more than necessary. A lot of people say, now, was that necessary? He said, well, no, then that'd be superfluity. Hello? So that's what we learned, superfluity of not. That's the thing he said, more than necessary. So now he said, so you can receive with meekness. 
being grafted. That's all it is. Let's look at engraft right quick. A graft. Engraft, graft, and we'll come back to this 3 and 15. See, we can't do something we don't know. Stop that. Well, that's what we've been guilty of. Trying to process in our mind. We don't know what it is, and we got it. It don't make common sense. I can only do it if I understand it. Because if the word ever liveth, the word don't die, and I'm trying to live forever, well, I just got to let the word be in me. No, I got to let the word graft me. We got to be engrafted. Let's see what graft and engraft is. Now, that's going to be some sincerity and graft. I've never seen that, but that's a word. Whoa. I ain't have me out with all them in graft. Come, you saw. Okay, four, one, sixteen, six, one. Okay, now. Let's give me another turn. Graft, okay. A shoot. Or twig inserted into a slit or the on the trunk or stem of a living plant from which it receives sap. A shoot is what you'll call a plant when it first comes up or a flower when it comes out of the ground, they'll call it a shoot. Y'all got it? They will call it a shoot. And he's telling you about it's coming out of something. Let's say, what did it say again? A shoot or a, a shoot or a twig inserted into a slit on the trunk or a stem of a living plant from which it receives sap. Y'all got it? A piece of living tissue that is transplanted surgically. That's when folks tell we're going to do a skin grab. Surgically where they'll put the skin where something is missing or replaced. That's what we look at with the word. That's what's missing with us, the word. That's what's missing. So the shoot, give me some. The tower of what I just read. Hands. Yep, yeah, never been taught it before. Uh oh, I got one. My pastor. Tell me what you know, Pastor. You said grafting the Gentiles in. Uh oh, we got one well, in the kingdom. Huh? You call, you talking from Hayward Kingdom? You're in Hayward Kingdom. What's the, what you got? So what now? If only there was such a law that they were what? He went on back in the bathroom. <laughs> we didn't even finish. Hold on. Hold on, what you got? Uh, I'm the branch. My husband's the other man. He can use that. He can use it. It's all gone. That's all you know, Papa. I probably. He said the. the uh, he talked about the vine. That's true. So what you finna say, Chris? Well, 11th chapter of the book of Yeshayahu. <laughs> the 11th chapter, Yeshayahu. So you see, this is not really hard for us to, to really grasp the concept. They call it Isaiah, Yeshayahu. What's that they told us? 11 and 1. So I try to get them finished here. Is it 11 and 1 or 1? Listen. Then a shoot shall Wow, that's amazing, ain't it? Y'all just talked about a shoot. Then a shoot shall spring from the stem of Yashi. Oh, the stem of Yashi. And a branch from the roots shall bear pari. So that's what we're looking at. That meant he was going to give us something that was going to be grafted in. So that's what they did with Yahushua. He grafted them in. So we need to know that before we learn about grafting in other nations. We had to understand the process of how trees grow, how plants grow, how things planted. In order for those things to be planted, the seed has to die, which was us. In order for us to get life, and that's what you looked at with a bin. A bin was life to a to a bed, to a house, to a family. So it only made sense if a bin is a seed, then the seed has to die in order to give life. Hello? We always thought it had to live after it dies. It has to die. There's no seed you put in the ground living. It has to die. That's why we looked at him. We had to look at him as a seed. Everything we understood, it was practical, just like we saw now. Then a shoot shall spring from the stem. They let us know where it's going to come. And then the root, you start attaching the root. When we put a seed in the ground, what it got to do? Take root, too. Once we put it in the ground, it's dead, but it's got to take root. When we build, what we got to plant? 
Where's the foundation? On top? Got to put it in the ground. That's just like the roots. You might have the top part, but the bottom part is just like the root. See, your building is practical for just like when you see trees and shoot. They got to have root. You got to have a foundation. And then that's how you build from, and that's how you build there upon. Y'all got it? Same thing with the tree and it start to grow and build. It's got to get root. It's got to have a foundation. From there, it can grow and it can build. Y'all got it? And that's the same thing had to happen to us. And we had to understand how we got life through the sun. The sun had to die. So it's practical. It's practical. When he told that when he told Abraham how all his uh, all his descendant were gonna be, what was it again? Well, someone, what how? Baraka. Gonna be Baraka, yeah, through him. Then it was practical to take him up and give him to offer him up for death. It was just impractical at the time, people just couldn't process that. But we didn't understand that the Ben, or did Abraham understand, because he was willing to go and do it, that the Ben is a seed, the noon. And in order for a seed to give life to others or to keep generating, it has to die. We say he went up by faith and did it. That ain't practical. He said someone come to take all oh, take bright, just go kill him. Why? What they do? That question. I don't, uh, uh I ain't asking no question. I'm just moving by the spirit. That, what? What? Y'all on some kind of nigga drugs? That make common sense. Just take all up here, knife, wood, stick it on my son. I'm going to kill him. <clears throat> That's the only one I got. Unless, what do I know? Because they need you to think that everything is so deep out complete. That don't make sense. What did he know? Did he, let's see, can we see our Olive chart again? And the reason why I'm talking to y'all like this, because I need us to think. Stop letting other people try to be brain for us. And we, now, everybody in their own mind processing your mind what Abraham was thinking. Hey, man, Abraham, he's just full of the spirit. He's just going. Abraham, he just, can they teach you? He's just by faith. So now, you know what they tell me about? Just start doing stuff on faith. I don't understand. I hear a voice, just go with it. It don't even make sense. It don't even make sense. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to take my son and stick wood on his back and just kill him. Because somebody said, hey, you love your son? Yeah, I love my son. You love your own son? Yeah, I own son. Go kill him. How did it process? We having a conversation about my a heart for him, my love for my son, the attachment. So if I killed the son, what did we learn about your code when they were told about Benjamin dying? My life, cause he a heart. You see why he a heart? That we were told that his life was attached. They were grafted. So now you just told me just go kill my son. I just start walking up a hill. I'm a hundred some years old with a knife and wood on the man back. Let's see. Let's see. This early Phoenician writing. This is a, this, this is a, a writing that pretty much every Middle Eastern used. This ain't new. This wasn't just our, this was the culture, this was the language. This is how people communicated over in the region where we were. This is the first known writing that we knew man had. This is sophisticated, complex writing because they use pictures. And pictures, thousand words. We get more done with this than you can with 26. We have 22, 23 with the goon, the goon, the um, the The gone. And with that one, you don't typically see it. But the noon seed is what we use. The noon seed. Sun. Sun. To me, air. Come and possess, continue. The only way it makes sense to me, processing. If you told me to kill my son, who is the heir. I would have to see him as a seed. And if I take a natural seed and it die, and I plant it, it can continue. The only way it can make sense is that he would know, which he would have understood hieroglyphs. My son being the noon. Born, Beth, Noon, put together, Ben, son, is the heir. And this is the one who's going to come in possession of, and he is my 
see. Now, if you tell me to kill him, I have to understand this and understand in order for it to the seed to continue, it has to die. It does not make sense that you walk up and you call me from a boy and tell me, take my son and kill him. Not unless I'm stupid. Just don't make sense. I have to know more than what you write, that the writers told you. That's why it's important to know the right. It, it only way it makes sense. I got a process with you. I'm a man. I got five senses. You made me get rid of a son and say, this is your heir. You told me this was my heir. If you told me that, I understand heir from what? From what, Oliver? From the lineman? I understand it from the teeth. How do I understand heir? From the noon, the seed. The son is the seed. He's the heir. He continues. He only continues in that he has to die. The problem we got, is we got a book that we read, we run through, and it's left to everybody imagining. You as any Christian, pull every one of them. Say, say, what you think he was thinking? I think Jesus was in his heart early. So I'm thinking the same thing about your mama. Because, see, he, it doesn't make sense. This is why it's dangerous that when we do stuff that you don't consider what they knew. What was the language? What was the writing? What was the script? Because if Elohim is talking, you're talking to me. That means there is a communication. Let's say he was talking spiritual, which means I got to understand what? Spiritual. spiritual. That's all that's going to work. But you're talking to me, and I'm a man. That means we're talking about things I know. You told me to kill my bin. The bin is the seed. The noon that continue who is the heir. And your whole conversation had been to me about my son being the heir. So what is my association? You telling me to kill the bin who is the heir. And for some reason continue don't come up in my mind and seed. Has to. It goes with the bin. People need you to think that these people just walked around doing things. That don't make sense to give me five cents to tell me to come to church and don't use none of them. Do y'all see what I'm showing y'all? This is practical. The sun is the bin. Am I correct? Am I, am I crazy? So you're telling me that, hold on, let's see. What is that? 21 Bar Rashid? Let's see, 21, uh, what is that, 21, 12, Barashit. Come on, I'm trying to watch my time. We'll get ready and go, y'all. So you'll get people, you know what they'll want to do? I want to get in that book of Revelation, man. That book is deep. They always want to run somewhere. They don't even understand what they read him. There are some things that's not for you to know. There are some things you need to process to understand first before you try to run for other things. A lot of times people are always trying to run this stuff. And if it's a mystery, that means it's not for you to know. Because according to the 29th chapter of the book of, what is that? The uh, Allah Hadabrin 29 29, the uh, secret thing belong to Allahim. Those things which are revealed, he said, belong to us and to our children. You don't know why. He says, so that we may do them. I'm going to become a locust and start flying around and stinging me, and they ain't going to die. I stuff people trying to run to do it. A lot of things, he just leave it just like it is. I tell it to you, but it's beyond your comprehension. A lot of things beyond your comprehension. Cause I'll tell it to you. Even your Ukanon was going to write and tell you, he was going to tell you about the mystery. Huh? You know why he told him not to do it? That don't belong to you. He said when the, thunder, when the seven thunders uttered, he said, I got ready to start writing. And he said the voice told him, the car told him to put his pen down. It's not for you to know. The secret thing belongs to Elohim. The old thing which I reveal, they belong to us and to our Benin. That we might do them. He said, even all this tour. I'm giving what belongs to you. Somebody else trying to go get you somewhere. It don't belong to you. Let's say. Listen. 
But Elohim said to Abraham, let it not be Rosha in the um because of the lad mm -hmm. and because of your maid. Whatever Sarah tells you, listen to her call. Mm -hmm. For through Yasekat, your descendants shall be, shall be Shem. And Shem here, what did it say in the other one? What happened? It don't say Shem in that, does it? Yes, it said Baraka and his. You called. It said what? Yakra. Oh, it's going to be called. Okay, call. He's saying name. They're going to be named. Okay, the send us up. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Why am I thinking 326? Let me see what Roman 3 and 26 say. All right, quick. Something coming to mind. Let me see. Are you 22? 3, Roman. Let me see something. I'm a Galatian site. Oh. Mm -mm. Oh. Mm. See if the 20, right back up to 22. 20, I'm going to see something. Some can in my mind. Let me see 23. No. Um. Mm -mm. Okay, don't worry about it. 3 and 16. Galatians. Galatians 3 and 16. So, 3 and 16 Galatia Jacob <coughs> gotta take that test 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 everybody say test we test in the synagogue we test we test <laughs> come and go we can Catch any COVID, uh, any SRV. Right, Galatians 3 and 16. Come on. Try to get through it. Come on. Behold, the, sh the Shaba were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. To his noon? Seed. Ben. He does not say, and to seeds as a many, mm -hmm. but as a one, and to your seed that is. Hamashiach. So now, when he brings up, um, he brings up Abraham, now just looking at this. Now to Abraham, who would be the father? And they sing to him concerning the amazing he used seed, which is the same thing we look on our chart for the noon, which is seed, is he literally talking about a seed? He's talking about a son. He's using seed because what happens with a seed? A seed can sprout. We talked about engrafted. We just talked about a shoot coming out of something. So that's what you have with a seed. That's why he's looking. Remember, from one seed, he was going to cause all this to stem from it. You got it? So now they had to understand the process of growing, how things work with seeds and trees. So he understood it was practical that I can have all of these through one seed. It was practical. It's not practical for me to look at one sun and just look up at the stars and say, yep, that's it. I only told you to look up because I told you I put an ox in the shamim, which was a sign. So these are used to show and demonstrate. Can you count these? Or they told, I want you to do this, Abraham. Go into your mind. And put a bunch of things and see, can you count them? No. I want you to look up because I put an ox in the Shamayim. A sign. Those were signs. If you can count them. He's human. Who wouldn't? I can't count them. He said, 
I ain't even gonna try, Lord, because once you said that got it. I'm a man. I just asked you if you can count them. What am I gonna try to do? That make common sense. Even Shalom, Shalom, who they call Solomon, he said he was trying to find out the account. What was he doing? Why were he doing twos and threes? Because sometimes you can miss. One by one. I was trying to find out the account. Abraham did the same thing. That's how I know he knew. I can't. I see you're saying my descendants are going to be more than these. How? Through one. Your one son is a seed. Abraham would have been familiar with crops that you can plant a seed in the ground and run them up. If I plant one kernel, how many more kernels can I get? Two? Way more than I plant. He can understand it. We're just using corn. Let's do corn. Let's not use corn because they don't use, they want to use corn. Let's use wheat. How many I'm going to get on an ear? Two? Why do you think we use wheat? You know how many grains you get off one stem? From a seed. From a seed. So it makes sense that behold the promises to Shabbat, what do you put, put a different word right here? Uh, Hava Takath, because these are promises, TH is plural, was spoken to Abraham and to his, to his seed, singular. He does not say, and to many as of, and he told as of many, but as to, and to your seed, that is the, now this is important for you, why? When he had Abraham, when he had Yasakar, that's why it made him get rid of, that's why it made him get rid of Yashma Ishmael. Because remember, it made sense now. When he went, he didn't quite process. Look, he a man. Let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. So, going and killing his son wasn't nothing, but he was told to get rid of that son. The thing greeted him. It was hard pressed on him. He just shot straight up the hill, though, ready to kill. He just put one out. This thing damn near killed him. Broke it hard, hard pressed. Oh, yeah, go kill that one. Shoot, straight up the hill to kill him. Don't make sense. He had to give him a nakoon. This is a seed, Abraham. You're familiar with planting crops. The noon. The sun is an heir. The sun dies. That's how the seed does in order to continue. So now we had the process that we were being begotten through one seed, Yahushua. Which means we would have had to understood how a seed grow and when you get wheat. On one stem, how many you can get? That we can look and see him as one and yet begin all of us. Through him. That's why he made all of the other Benin get away from him. We never understood why. He said because it was to one. That's why I made him send all of them away while he was yet alive. I made him get rid of them. Get rid of them while he yet alive. Because it's only going to be through one. Hello? I don't know what the people are doing. That's amazing because Yahushua wound up getting rid of all of his Talmudin while he was yet alive. Because it's only going to be through one. It was not intended to be getting through them. Hello? So now we see how now through the word, what did he say he did? But God, he us. Through the bar, that's how he got us, which is going to be an engrafting. He realized how to get man back to get him back to life. See, Adam would have lived by the very word that came from Yahushua, it just, by Yahuwah. It just went engrafted. He needed us now to be engrafted with it, where it comes and join with us and attach to us, to where it gives us the stability to be able to continue to live by the word. He tried it. That a man that duffed these things with us, that's why you dying. Because it got contentious upon on you dying too, just like it was in the gun. That's what Adam did. He lived by him. You don't know when you break the law, you also justify it. That was Shaul said in the seventh. You justify it. That is true. Why do you think you're dying? Hello? That's what he said. And it did it. It justified. It's right. That's why you're dying. Just like you live. It ain't right. Okay, it's right when you die too. 
It's right. You just got to understand it. Everything told totally her right. You're supposed to suffer. That's how you know you're dying. This I don't. How, you, how was he going to know he was dying? How was he going to know he was dying? That sweat. That tiredness. Nothing working out. How hard pressed it was. And you better know you're dying too. That's how he's going to get you back. Come unto me. All you did, what was it? And? How long you think? What you think? I done probably played around out there a little bit. He probably just kept breaking the ground up. Man, I'm good right here, man. I already just bust my ass right here. How long you think it took him to get back? How long y'all think it took him to get back? He'd have heard that. Come unto me. All that burden and heavy laid. Right quick. I've been waiting to hear that. See, the reason why you procrastinate getting back, because you don't know what your situation is. That's the same thing Yahushua told you in about the 21st chapter book of uh, uh, Oriya. He said, you didn't even know the time of your visitation. And now your enemy is going to come and lay you even with the ground. He said, because you didn't even understand your time. See, all this is happening to try to let you know where you're at. That's why it's a need to get back. It's a need for you to get back. You dying, bro. Since you dying. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about processing it. It's not that important. And then he told you now, and to your seed, that is the, the anointed one, the one he chose. But in order for you to understand that, you had to understand from Yasakar. That through that one seed, that's how he got us. So it was practical that Yahushua would come. It ain't practical when you sit around talking about Yahushua came and you child of God and all that. What you said don't make common sense. You just, re you reciting something. You ain't never understood it. You never understood it. You understand errors coming. People just have kingdom talk. It's garbage. They don't know what they're talking about. They just run their mouth. I'm trying to give you practicality from your chart. This ain't me creating that, fabricating that. You understand the new. You understand the son. He's the heir. That made sense now when you come down. And it made sense that the son was coming to save us. In him giving his life, the seed puts itself to give it life to who feed who to nurture us. That's what the son come and do was to nurture. That's why the man told you when he said, broke a tape, eat. What is this here? Which is what? So the seed go fall on the ground and create and make powery fruit, not to be ingested, to be taken in. Because what does the food do? It nourishes, it gives life. So it understood, you had to understand that naturally so you understood what the person with him. The son came to give us life. And that you might have it. That means you need more of it. Hello? He told you his outcome that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. They understood life was through their eating. And it was attached with the word, just like where Adam in the gun. They had the teaching that man didn't live by bread alone. By the come along, they was something. If she was hungry, it wanted to be desired. What she did, she went against the word. And he's trying to teach you the same principle. It ain't going to work, baby. It ain't going to work. You're only going to live by the word. That was they had to understand it. That's why it had to come. And in the beginning, what was it again? What's the, the, the word? And what was the word? And the word was? The same was well. So it made sense why he told you he gave his life. That's what the word come to do. It's how you supposed to live, by the word. So it makes sense that I'm going to engraft you with it. So you can keep living. But see, we don't understand the process of how they process. Understand the people. If he spoke to this man who had less education than us, yet he had a platform, he understood the dynamic, he understood the language, the culture, and yet he gave this man a burial. How you get so damn smart? You don't know nothing. You don't understand chart, grab, you don't understand light, how things is it. These people understood it from a plan. He gave this man a promise that everybody's still living from today. It ain't obsolete. It's the same promise. I was just trying to help y'all out. That's all. That's what I'm telling you. He told the only reason he said he added the law. He said it was added because of transgression to the seed should come. That Adam had ten commandments. I'm sorry. That I, that Abraham had ten commandments. Hello. No, he didn't. He told you why didn't serve the law. He said it was added because of transgression to the seed should come, to whom the promise was made. 
Every day to keep it till the promise come. But we kind of missed that too. Listen, we got a lot of work we got to do. Yeah, a lot of y'all ain't going to be able to hold on to do it. And that's fine. I just want you to be honest with yourself. That's all. I want to just tell you the flat, butt naked truth, take everything off for it. So you can really process this. You understand what you're doing. We just can't keep flying through no wind, just believing no stuff all I know. It don't make sense. That's what all the other people are doing. Why, why, if you got a chart of, what was the language? Was him, was him saying that, were they sitting on a rock speaking English? No, they had a language. There's a culture. There's something you can follow. That's something you could sit down and look. This is how this would designate. This is how this would put together. This is how this man saw this. Nobody just jumped up and just started doing it. This man said, make no sense. In that the case, why was it when, when, Sean, when um, Sherman Wall, why was it when he was laying in bed, soon he heard the voice, he jumped up and said, I've been waiting on you to talk to me. <laughs> Who did he go to? Why he didn't get up and start, and start building a tower going to Shamayim? He said, I don't even know who the man is. So that makes sense that Abraham just jumped up all of a sudden and just went ready to kill his son. Unless you understood what? Unless you processed what? What was your knowledge of? Because they leave you and they give you just enough to leave you stupid. And that's why all these people create these religions. Because in your mind, you can put anything together. In our mind, come on, we fabricate anything. And that, and that won't save you. If I'm supposed to believe in him, as the scripture said, I got to understand writer. I got to understand time. I got to understand dispensation. I got to understand culture. There's a lot of things these people never told us about. We processed stuff like hell. They were shopping at Walmart up the street. There's a culture. There's a behavior that we missed. How important a seed was for them. A seed was very important to them. And for their e that was their existence. They know when they took things up, they needed to do what? I got to keep a seed. I don't know why we out. I got it right. The only way to do it, to put back is with a seed. Every time we put a tree, get what he told to do? Replenish. <laughs> Even the trees understood that. I got to replenish. Stay out and don't do nothing. No, replenish, keep putting back. I put something in you so you can keep putting back. The great, keep putting back. Everybody understand that process up for us. We're the only people confused, dumbfounded. There's a process how everything works. Everything has a system of how it works. Hello, that's amazing. You know what's supposed to happen if I run up on some birds? And they got the dams inside of the inside of the uh, inside of the nest. You know what's amazing? I'm supposed to eat the dam and let the mother go. You said, no, I am. Let's do the other way how we think. Kill the bird. What happened to the seed? Who are going to be best to kill? The baby. The baby. That man said the mama and the baby. <laughs> Quit, wait, what white church you go to? What white church? What, what, what white preacher been teaching you? He got in the switch. But you see what I'm saying? So guess what, it, guess what I understood? It made sense to spare the mother and take the dime because she can go and recreate. So now... I can't obtain life through the sun, and through the sun, it give her life. No nigga do, white man do? Kill the damn mother. I just can't kill them babies. What's going to happen to the baby that ain't got nothing to feed them? And get what he told me. Kill the baby. That way the mother can live. Because he was... We did call him our son, didn't we? Who it made sense to kill when it came on us? Made sense to kill the dam. Kill the baby. Let the mother go. See? They missed it. See, everything they had was practical. See, everything, it was practical. Everything was just practical. They knew that. It made practical sense. So kill the mother and see what happened. Wow. I was trying to save the kid by killing the mother. And I didn't realize... Now there's nobody to take care of the kid. It made more sense to kill the kid and leave the mother. Because the mother can regenerate. She can create again. So now light came in through the dam. Hello? Y'all understand that process? See, the way he worked things, he gave it to her for so many different analogies that you could see it, and it just made sense. Because we processed that, man, I don't want to do that. I'm going to just kill it. He said, it don't make sense. Because when you kill her, you done already killed that out. To keep this thing going, it's going to make sense to kill the kid. 
Y'all understand that? It just made sense to kill the kid. It was going to be all on us. It made sense that Yahuwah looked at. I came across on y'all. He said it made sense to kill the kid. It just made sense. Y'all got it? Yes, sir. It just all made sense. I want us to take our time. Don't try to run real fast. Don't run slow. Just want to be steady. I want to make sure we understand the process. I want to make sure we're serious about where you want to get this right. You don't want to do this. Don't let nobody try to talk you into doing that you don't want to do. I myself, I will be disappointed. But at the end of the day, this is a walk you really want to be assured in. Don't let nobody push you into that. Don't let nobody, come on, we got to get, who is we? This is self. Me and you going in the casket together? You're going to doubt me? Everything you're going to do is going to be for you. Not for your husband, your wife. It's going to be you. So you really need to sit back and consider where you at with this whole thing. How you see this? Is this something you really want to do? Because you're finna put right, you're finna graph your life to something. That you're finna put yourself as one with the word. That's the only way you're, the man coming back for his word. Why did, let me ask you something. Why did, why did Yehuda come back to see tomorrow? He said his word was attached to that stuff. I had to come back. Don't y'all know that man got to come back because of his word? And if it be found in me and I be grabbed it, he got to come get me. So you've been trying to just come get him to come get an individual. You got to get him to come back since you know he come back for a word. I just got to make sure it be found in me. Y'all got it? That's too. Appreciate it.